Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Hello everyone and welcome to the 80th year of AFD. Anniversary, so we're here to celebrate. We are very glad to be here with you. Donc pour plus de confort, mesdames et messieurs, je vais vous demander. For greater comfort, ladies and gentlemen, those who are in the room. Or you too at home or at the office, please turn your phones off. Please, please turn your phones off. And now, right now, even at home, not in vibrating mode or silent mode, turn it off. Thank you so much. It feels good, doesn't it? It really feels good. Isn't it pleasant? to take time, suspend time, to stop that machine instead of that noise, that constant noise, all that space of information that makes everything close to us, a few minutes without it, just for a breather. Come on, let's breathe deeply together. OK, we can now begin. Maintenant que l'on est ici, tous ensemble, au présent, changeons de focale et observons notre monde. Non, parce que quoi qu'on en dise, tout ne va pas si mal, vous savez. Saviez-vous qu'en 2021, 80% des êtres humains ont accès à l'électricité Que le taux de scolarisation des filles se situe aujourd'hui autour de 90% Que la mortalité infantile recule Ou encore que les régimes démocratiques n'ont jamais été aussi nombreux notre monde est éprouvé par les guerres, les pandémies, le dérèglement climatique, la disparition de la biodiversité et la montée des inégalités. Mais il est en mouvement, porté par tant d'acteurs engagés. Pour le voir, il faut poser sur lui un œil neuf, patient, assidu. Un œil qui s'attache aux structures pour changer la réalité dans la durée. Comme le travail de l'AFD, une action méticuleuse au long cours, sans tambour ni trompette. 12 milliards d'euros et 1000 nouveaux projets chaque année à travers le monde entier. L'AFD a bien grandi depuis sa naissance il y a exactement 80 ans. 1941. La France a capitulé mais la résistance s'organise. L'Empire colonial y joue un rôle crucial. C'est lui qui est à l'origine de la toute nouvelle caisse centrale de la France libre et permet avec l'armée d'Afrique, au général de Gaulle, de revenir en vainqueur à Paris. 1946. Au moment où la France se relève de la guerre, la caisse centrale devient la cheville ouvrière du grand programme de reconstruction et d'investissement de nos Outre-mer. Sa mission améliorer concrètement les infrastructures et la vie des habitants au-delà des seules frontières de l'Hexagone. 1960, l'Empire s'efface. Les indépendances rebattent les cartes. Un nouveau cadre pour la Caisse centrale qui poursuit ses activités avec une nouvelle mission, la coopération économique aux côtés des nouveaux États. 1975, le domaine d'action de la Caisse centrale s'étend encore dans un nombre croissant de pays d'Afrique, bien au-delà de l'Afrique francophone. Sa filiale ProParco, créée en 1977 pour promouvoir l'entrepreneuriat et le secteur privé, connaît un essor rapide. 1983, nouvelle étape. Les crises de la dette des États et les effets sociaux des ajustements structurels mobilisent de nouveaux partenaires. La Caisse centrale travaille de plus en plus avec d'autres acteurs que les gouvernements. Les organisations de la société civile, les villes ou les banques publiques de développement. Devenue Agence française de développement en 1998, elle intègre progressivement les enjeux sociaux et environnementaux, au-delà de la seule action économique. Étant son activité aux pays d'Asie et d'Amérique latine, sa ligne depuis 2015 sur l'accord de Paris et sur les ODD intègre les institutions, le sport et la culture à ses financements. En 2021, l'AFD est un investisseur solidaire. Un partenaire impliqué et bienveillant. Attentif à l'unité et à la fragilité du vivant. Le groupe AFD, avec le renfort aujourd'hui d'Expertise France, se place résolument du côté des autres. Pour construire un monde en commun où chacun trouve dans le dialogue et l'entraide internationale les solutions pour sa propre transformation. 
un monde où les murs ne gardent ni ne défendent, mais relient, abritent et accueillent. Un monde comme un foyer où chacun aura sa place en harmonie avec la planète. Horizon ou utopie depuis les quatre coins du monde, le groupe AFD est en résonance avec l'ensemble de ses clients et de ses partenaires. Pour accélérer la transition énergétique et la lutte contre les inégalités. Pour préserver les cultures et protéger le vivant. Pour construire ensemble le monde des 80 prochaines années jusqu'en 2101. Et ça commence tout de suite, là, maintenant. Êtes-vous prêts And here we have from the AFD. Hello, Remy, and thank you for gathering us here today in this wonderful amphitheater for this anniversary date. Thank you, Asha, and I'm delighted to be here with all the colleagues from AFD and with our guests to share this moment here in Paris and around the world Well, this wonderful showcase, the Berniquet Amphitheatre at the Jardin des Plantes beside the Great Gallery of Evolution, a wonderful location. Well, it is a wonderful location. You can see up there, it's also a historical uh, place in 1797, or the great scientists in France, Tuvier, Claude Bernard, they taught here. Also, Marie Pizalix, the first agrégé in sciences, doctor and president of the League for Women's Rights at the start of the last century, and also Theodore Monod, for those who love Africa, as we do, for those, it's also his home, a very special place in terms of relationship with the world, our relationship with living things, a place of curiosity, sharing, and science, at a time where we needed so much. So a big word of thanks to Bruno Dabile and to all the teams from the National Museum of Natural History for hosting this event today. So here and elsewhere, elsewhere, as I said, because our viewers are connected from around the world. Remy, over 4,000 online, thank you for being with us. This is a program for you, and we're waiting for your comments and questions. There's a chat open for your comments and questions all throughout the event, or via Twitter using the hashtag. And for those in the room, you can also use the hashtags. We'll take some comments live later on, and you'll see how it works. So Remy, 80 years alongside others, but who are they? Well, 4,000 online, that's the first indication of the great diversity. You will, during the next hours this afternoon, you will see guests who will be coming to speak before you and different performances as a sign of uh, wealth and diversity. It's been five years now that I've been Director General of AFD. I can tell you the amazing wealth uh, we've seen over the past five years. AFD is a treasure. You can find everyone there in all sectors throughout the world and discover all of our colleagues can share this uh, treasures in innovation. We will step back today. The idea is to present to you all of the people we work with, those who have become our friends, and maybe to hear their voices, to take time to listen to them carefully, and to hear their singularity, to hear others in terms of their alterity, their otherness, the things that may be disturbing, and at the same time to establish dialogue so that we can change and inspire each other. So this is what we wanted to say with this catchphrase, 80 years alongside others. Those watching us may not know, but you are the son of a historian and a historian as well. 80 years in light of evolution. It is nothing. Why stop at this anniversary? 
Well, it's very important for an organization or for a person or a collective body to know, as you said, when to stop and to present yourselves, to represent yourselves and to try to explain what you do in development. It's not very well known as a profession, and I think it calls for a lot of attention. So we organize the moment that will be very true to the work we do at AFD in other development institutions and the work in 1941 and today in 2021 and what it could become in 2101, a bit like tea, in 80 years, what could become of this profession in development? So we'll see these two projects. We'll be the presenting the persons behind those projects with our friends, wonderful projects of all sizes around the world with colleagues from AFD behind those projects. This is also a way to pay tribute to the entire group and its subsidiaries and Pro Parco Expertise France and our 4,000 employees or former director generals as well who were before me, and all those who built this establishment with its strength and all its wealth. And from our exchange of views, maybe we can open up a new forum because we can all feel that something is happening today, and we need to um, give it shape to elucidate it. We met in Montpellier this week about relations between Africa and France. We went to Glasgow. We spoke about financing and the fight against climate change, which has become an, an so urgent. In Brussels, we'll be there in February um, for the European Union and African Union. So we, we have started to build all of these initiatives all together, and that would be truly precious. Thank you. The president of AFD is closely linked to history and relations between France and this the southern regions, a relation that we should interrogate once again to lay down the foundations for brand new cooperation, decided and encouraged by the President of the Republic at the new summit meeting between Africa and France in Montpellier, and also for all the players in all areas of cooperation. Discuss this. You wanted to continue here with an exchange of views that you started with Ashir Limbe some months ago during a residence in Arles within the former Copa Festival called Acting for the Living. A rhetoric orchestrated by Severine Kojo Granvo. Let's welcome them both. Severine on this platform, Ashir in duplex from Johannesburg, where you escaped unfortunately because of the Omicron. <laughs> So I'll stand over here so I can see everyone. Severine, you're a philosopher, uh, associate researcher at the University of Paris 8, author of African Philosophy, which was awarded the Louis Marin de l'Académie of Overseas Sciences, and also Tiffany Bibon, challenging our relationship with the cosmos and nature. You're also a journalist at Le Monde. Achille, and baby, you're there somewhere on the screen. You're a historian, politologist. You published many um, essays on decolonization and taught in South Africa and the United States. At the request of the President of the Republic, you were the architect of the new summit meeting, Africa, France, and the author, after seven months of investigation, of a report entitled to re-found, re-establish relations between France and the continent. Remy, I pointed out your passion for history as well, but you also coordinated the finance agenda, as you said, for the French presidency of COP21, and published Reconciliation, a book which seeks to reinvent the development policy aligned on the famous SDGs and the Paris Accord. So the important topic for you should we really reconcile France and Africa, development and sustainable, history and our future? So the discussion will be exciting. 
Merci Over to you, Severine. Thank you for this, your presentation. Hello, everyone. And hello, Ashid and Benbe. We're delighted to have you both here to share with us your thoughts and your thoughts that you have started to work on some months ago, both of you. We're celebrating the 80th anniversary of AFD today. It's been eight years now that this agency has been supporting our companies in their evolutions. We saw that through the short video uh, presenting it, 80 years, which saw hard times, wars, deadly conflicts, the fall of the Berlin War, and also decolonization, the recomposition of African societies and their economies, the development, the emergence of uh, digital, maintaining or deployment of mining economy that is, doesn't care much for the environment, and also living beings and human beings as well. We know today that Africa is one of the first uh, continent to be impacted by global warming caused mainly by the economies in countries in the north and their lifestyle. I don't want to, to paint an apocalyptic picture. We saw in the video, things aren't that bad after all with the emergence of digital that has allow, allowed us to have wonderful innovation. Sciences and techniques have improved the living conditions and health, and societies are getting more democratic and education is making progress. But we need you to shed light, both of you, to understand what's going on. We have been feeling, Ashil Bembe, that we are at a tipping point where everything is possible, the best and the worst. Some analysts um, speak about a tipping point of the world. Do you share that view? And what are the main challenges in today's world? Thank you, Severine, and good evening, everyone, and happy anniversary for the ABD and all his teams. Severine, I think it's a tipping point moving towards the limits, because Earth, with a capital E, and we know that it is a finite system, this Earth, is constantly contracting. It is about to reach its limits. It seems to me that this experience of its limits, and of course the litany of extreme situations it generates, that some, well, we know that for many regions in the southern regions of the world, creating living beings from the what is uh, unlivable for centuries, that was our condition. But what's new, because there's something new, is that from now on, we share proofs of the extreme with several others, others whom we can protect in future. No walls, no borders, no bubble, or confines. But I hope that Rémi will come back to what I will be pointing out. I'd like to draw your attention to three key events that we are experiencing at this moment. First of all, the disruption in the equilibrium in the natural processes of our planet that is now in progress. That equilibrium is in jeopardy at a time when Capital, more than ever before, is being injected in projects for infinite extensions. Infinite extensions 
seeking to reduce societies to just the markets. It is a key event. We cannot pretend that this momentum is not in progress. Reducing societies to markets, but also the technical and almost total control, not only of human exchanges, but of the living in general. This is the situation when you observe it, for example, from Africa or South Africa, where I am right now. This is the situation, and this is why, without um, being apocalyptic, this is why I believe we can assert that we are in the era of the combustion of the world, an era when the possibility of a generic disruption casts a shadow over the membrane of our world. This disruption is being pushed forward by all the technological uh, changes we are witnessing. You yourself pointed out earlier the progress that has been made in technology with the advent of digital. I would say that recent history of humankind may be viewed in terms of two periods, a pre-digital and a digital era. It's not a matter of whether or not this is good or bad. It is unavoidable at any rate. The question is, in the midst of all this, how will we be able to continue not only to gather and store data and process data, and in so doing, to give free flow to digital. The question is, in this world where digital is coding and recoding living beings and whether or not it will still be possible to have room for human reason, in other words, for consciousness, for an intelligence that can generate not only facts but meaning. The, I would say that a meaning is something that is much sought out today. This is one of the founding elements that requires us, I believe, to pay great attention. I spoke about uh, the rise of technology, but I wouldn't only like to point out constraints and uh, hindrances. I would also like to draw your attention to possibilities and even innovation in terms of what is being uh, what, what is emerging. I believe that Africa is a wonderful laboratory, not only for things that are coming, but also things emerging from the mist around us, giving us hope and a sense of Reassurance, Africa as a laboratory, those who go through it, and who stay there, and who listen, and who open up their eyes and ears, and try to learn, 
that person will quickly realize to what extent most regions of the African continent have kept strong traditions and relations from peer to peer, the economic production or the production of means of subsistence depend on the two principles of auto-organization and sharing resources as well as skills. We realize to what extent efforts made at sharing are essential in general creation. When I say that, that also includes innovation. I therefore believe that you have all of this that is a source of hope, not only in Africa, but also elsewhere. Rémi, you are the head of an agency that uh, is uh, very pragmatic in the field. Have you noted the same from your experience in action. What are the main difficulties based on your field experience are we facing today? And how can FD evolve in this changing world? Thank you, Severine. And I'd like to thank Achille Mbembe for being with us. Two months ago, he was in Montpellier. He didn't speak much there, actually, huh? so he's taking the floor today. Others uh, spoke very well indeed, but it is really wonderful to hear him. And I hope we can add to the voice of social sciences and philosophy and history adding, therefore, the voice of artists and maybe the voice of uh, practitioners to see if we have the same analysis and if the great disruptions that Achille described are equally confirmed. I strongly believe that public development banks, uh, including AFD, Caisse de Depot and Consignation as well in France, BPI as well. Around the world, these investment development banks also sense these uh, tensions, a bit like uh, seismographers, with the ability to share their perception of vibrations and to reduce those vibrations. As a matter of fact, we have a research department we have a risk department as well that seeks to measure as accurately as possible the credit of uh, states and companies. In the panel analysis, in the financial statements and the financial equilibrium, how can you reflect uh, the deterioration of what we can see in reality? Our establishment, as I said in my introduction, is very close to so many stakeholders in society, and we can therefore perceive anguishes and tensions, and we'll make all of this public in a few days. Every year we publish uh, surveys on top of dialogues that we have with our clients. We have these in France, relations between the French and the world, and what we observe is truly a massive growing awareness of the major transformations in progress. We can see that very deep down in the social body, in the political bodies in France and in Europe and around the world, I believe, with a great anguish if we are unable to face these limits with this sense that we can touch on the environmental, social and economic dimensions with brand new means of actions to cope with this. And I will conclude by saying that my experience and that of all colleagues at AFD and in our development and financing world, there was a major revolution in 2015 with the Paris Agreement 
these sustainable development goals. In other words, phrasing a new universal narrative, a universal narrative that pays attention to singularities and contexts and with goals and targets and the desire for a better world for all by the, let's say, 2015. That's the time when we should have a carbon neutrality and the world that is being deployed differently and that is perceived differently. Since then, we have um, a sort of tension that is unclear and uncertainties as regards what will vanquish. Would it be our geopolitical quarrels that are classics and that are there maybe stronger than ever before? Or will we have the global questions that are being raised? And we all experience this. Well, there may be fears or it, or it may be a source of hope that may emerge to subsume or to reach beyond the old uh, disparities and fractures and help to reduce them. I believe we have this experience, and it is in line with what Achille said. And like Achille, I also believe that what is happening in Africa on this front is quite singular. And it is important for Africa itself, but it is equally important for us, and it can be a source of inspiration for us. We must look at all of these people, kind of analyses with the ability to act for them to come together, maybe in coalitions that are bigger, more powerful, larger than ever before, and to set things in action. And I'll end with finance. Finance, that is our profession. We are financial establishment. Finance is not technical. Finance is all about time. It's when you believe in the long term. And finance is all about links, bringing people together closer. And finance means uh, bringing about concrete projects by accelerating them. So this, I believe, is our analysis and what we could share with everyone today. Well, this world, which is uh, ever-changing, uh, obliges us to uh, rethink the world, to inhabit the world. And for this, uh, we need uh, to work on imagination. Well, that is what a number of uh, researchers, scientists, uh, philosophers, uh, actors, uh, uh, social actors uh, invite us to do. I propose that we listen to them. Um, it was uh, done by Sarah Marnies and uh, the team of the AFD campus, uh, which bring us uh, news of tomorrow. Tant qu'on essaie de, de d'imposer des modèles, on ne laisse pas à ces, la capacité de produire des nouveautés. Je crois que trop souvent, on essaie de d'importer des solutions qui ont marché ailleurs, qui sont des buzzwords, qui sont des choses, euh, allez, tout le monde en parle, donc il euh, faut pas qu'on soit en marge, il faut faire la ville intelligente, même si on ne sait pas ce que ça veut dire. I would like to see our um, countries like Africa and Asia and South America not to copy the failed Western economic industrial system. On n'a jamais eu un diagnostic aussi intelligent. On en meurt de cette intelligence du diagnostic. Je pense que le grand défi, c'est cela, c'est d'articuler la politique à la connaissance. Nous ne croyons pas ce que nous savons. Les freins principaux euh, viennent de nous. Euh, on a tous des barrières mentales dans la tête. Nos esprits sont formés à des visions unilatérales, simplificatrices, et ces visions unilatérales et simplificatrices nous conduisent souvent en erreur. The problem is the conditioning of our minds. We are somehow conditioned that economy or money, but I call money no me, money will make us happy. The biggest challenge is really changing our mode of being in the world and acting with the world. Il faut absolument qu'on change de prisme de regard sur la nature. Donc c'est c'est une vraie révolution de montée en conscience philosophique où l'être humain s'émerveille du vivant, s'émerveille de la nature et s'interdit de la souiller, de la détruire, de la polluer. Il faut s'ancrer aussi dans le, le, le plaisir, la gratitude d'être sur une planète aussi belle, malgré tous les problèmes, qui nous a permis d'être là. I am nature and I have no right to spoil, to waste, to pollute, to damage, to harm nature. Pour savoir où l'on va, il faut savoir d'où l'on vient. Je crois que nous devons 
pour les générations actuelles et futures, faire ce travail de reconquête de notre histoire, pas dans un esprit de, de revanche, mais dans un esprit justement d'asseoir le process de développement sur des bases solides. One of the first challenge that we need to really tackle is the self-esteem of Africans. We need to build African self-esteem. C'est une question de dignité, c'est une question de justice sociale. Voilà ce qui en fait quelques éléments qui nous permettent de voir qu'il s'agit de, de penser les blessures. Je pense qu'il est important de remettre l'humain au centre de tous les enjeux, au centre des problèmes, au centre des solutions. Ça veut dire euh, écouter les populations et trouver des solutions avec des populations. Dire « je », c'est reconnaître la part de l'autre en soi. Dans le Sud Gabon, on dit que le jeu est à nous. Nous sommes un jeu qui porte toute une génération, je dirais, toute une transmission et que euh, toutes ces transmissions interconnectées permettent justement de se recentrer euh, sur des, des projets, des perspectives profondément humaines. On est vraiment très faible. Ce que ça veut dire, c'est qu'on est obligé de se lier. On a besoin que quelqu'un fasse attention à nous, comme sujet individuel, pour survivre. C'est le lien qui est important, c'est la reliance, c'est ça. Dans le fond, l'individu n'est pas séparé. Il ne peut s'épanouir que dans la communauté avec autrui et dans l'amour avec autrui. Ce n'est que dans l'échange et, et, et dans la conscience de l'interdépendance, de justement, et de la totalité organique heureuse, que l'on peut être dans un vrai échange. Quoi. Les mouvements, la migration, les, les brassages n'est pas l'exception, c'est la condition de possibilité de la vie sur cette planète. Je suis convaincu, justement, que la culture est ce véhicule qui peut nous aider à créer du lien social, à avoir des conversations et des discussions avec les politiques, avec le milieu économique, pour amorcer justement cette bascule qu'on attend tous. On pense la culture comme une ouverture, comme une tension, comme quelque chose qui permet à l'individu de s'enrichir au fur et à mesure de ses rencontres, au fur et à mesure de ses pérégrinations. On sait très bien que le monde bascule aussi par les minorités. Hein. C'est aussi de tous les acteurs ensemble. Nous devons vraiment avoir une personne qui ne peut pas résoudre ce problème. So, or these issues, we need to get everybody involved and taking part in, um, in um, solving the problem. Le défi du 21e siècle, c'est l'intelligence collective. Et donc on a besoin de dialoguer les uns avec les autres. On a besoin de comprendre le point de vue de l'autre. On a besoin d'empathie et de compassion pour euh, se mettre à la place des autres et se rendre compte que euh, la solution ne viendra que d'un collectif qui sera capable de se mettre d'accord sur les meilleures manières d'être confronté à ces problèmes de développement durable. Apprendre peut-être à travailler autrement de manière plus collaborative entre le secteur public, le secteur privé, le secteur académique, les start-up, les grandes entreprises. Et, et là, c'est, euh, je pense, une leçon d'humilité pour tous. Je suis juste un exemple de beaucoup de jeunes gens en Afrique qui ont pu développer leurs skills, construire des business et construire des solutions pour eux-mêmes juste parce qu'ils ont accès à la technologie technologies et l'Internet. Ma génération fait vraiment partie des entrepreneurs qui sont motivés par l'action et qui ne sont pas résignés, qui ne, sont, qui ne croient pas à la fatalité. Ces réponses, elles existent, mais elles existent dans ce qu'on appelle le monde de demain, dans ces, ces nouvelles niches, ces nouvelles technologies, ces innovations euh, qui existent à petite échelle, locales, qui sont encore un petit peu cachées euh, et qu'il faut mettre à l'échelle. L'enjeu, c'est comment toutes ces innovations qui restent quand même micro peuvent s'inscrire dans ce qu'on appelle une trajectoire technologique. Pour un meilleur futur désirable, il va falloir retravailler sur notre rapport à l'économie. Déjà la considérer, parce que beaucoup de gens la déconsidèrent, et habiter cette maison, parce que l'économie à l'origine, c'est la maison commune, c'est l'organisation de la maison. Comment est-ce qu'on fait que le sens ben, soit la boussole ou quoi Ce qui fait que les êtres humains ont pu prendre le dessus sur toutes les autres espèces, c'est leur capacité de s'organiser à des millions, voire à des milliards, et d'embarquer des millions ou des milliards d'individus dans une quête commune, et que le moyen d'y parvenir, ce sont les récits. On est l'animal du pourquoi. Fondamentalement, les êtres humains sont des êtres poétiques, c'est-à-dire que ce sont des, des créatures dont euh, la façon d'exister de, dans le monde est essentiellement euh, poétique et essentiellement structurée 
par des récits et des visions poétiques. Il nous faut travailler aussi sur des récits qui nous donnent envie d'avenir. Face à ce monde qui oppresse, il faut substituer un monde désirable. Il faut recourir au royaume de l'imagination pour faire advenir une, un, monde, un monde meilleur. Le texte littéraire, c'est un lieu où on fait humanité. L'émotion, c'est quelque chose euh, qui nous met, hein, quelque chose qui nous sort de nous-mêmes pour nous porter dans le monde et qui nous évite euh, une sorte de fidélité ossifiée euh, à nous-mêmes. Même dans les ténèbres, en fait, il peut y avoir toujours une lumière d'espoir. Et cet espoir-là, en fait, c'est à nous de le faire renaître. Cet espoir-là, c'est à nous de le créer. À mon avis, il faut continuer à croire en nos valeurs, en nos vérités, quoi qu'il arrive, et à un moment donné, les événements peuvent s'éclaircir. Moi, je crois que c'est ça qu'on appelle la résistance. Rémi Rio, je me tourne. So, Rémi Rio, I turn to you. I think we can indeed uh, applaud all these uh, wonderful words and the uh, incredible work done by your teams. So we've heard it. Um, it's an incredible challenge that uh, these people invite us to uh, rethink our model and to get out of the conditioning that uh, we find ourselves in. But it's a, a double, even a triple challenge is to question the, the way we do things. Uh, we heard about uh, collective intelligence and there's a third dimension. We uh, ask uh, technical development, but it's also um, you know, um, self-esteem, repairing. So how can we uh, commit in this, uh, to this evolution and to take part in uh, actions who will take care of the living things, the humans, uh, um, you know, in the light of history? I, I, I like the fact that you talk about care. I, I talk. Uh, I talk to Cynthia Flurry, who, uh, whom you see in this, uh, who you saw in this film, and she uh, offered to work. Uh, we, we work uh, with uh, her in Mukavu with Dr. Mukabe, and she offered to have a development clinic um, to mobilize uh, a whole bunch of uh, scientists, uh, professionals, uh, to try and redefine, to find the words, to rethink uh, our way of doing things. Um, and what uh, these messages tell us um, is, uh, yes, we must find a narrative um, we must uh, find new technologies, uh, we must um, find new links, uh, we must pay attention to the territories and to their specific challenges. So I've said so before, it's the message of the uh, objective of sustainable development. I, I think that we already have this framework, uh, we've had it for six years, um, and we must um, uh, totally uh, uh, you know get get our hands on it and we must change uh, our posture uh, all the way you know into the way we uh, we do things we need to put ourselves on the side of the others not to get away from them but to learn from them to see things differently to uh, go back to yourself uh, and to build uh, collectively so we need to challenge ourselves uh, as the time we celebrate our 80th birthday what does it means in terms of development to put yourself on at the side of the others uh, uh, we not there yet and can we do it in a stronger way and by um, uh, you know grasping this uh, technology uh, by you know putting ourselves on the side of others uh, if we deployed uh, fully uh, the power and the capacity of an institution such as, as the AFD and all the others uh, we have a part of the answer because this uh, capacity uh, to finance projects we need to continue we finance uh, a thousand projects a year but we need to do it more and more but uh, projects as many 
proof uh, uh, that uh, the uh, sustainable development, this transformation is possible, then in our house, we need to go from the project to the advice. We need to go from the project to the public policy, from the project to the transformation of the institutions, to the um, development trajectory. So the good news from Glasgow, I mean, things are, are clear as far as where we want to be in 2050. Now that we know where we want to be in 2050, uh, the pressure is, uh, you know, uh, on 2025, and it will uh, be uh, a question of projects. So it's a, a retroactive um, loop, if you if you will. But I think we can do much more, and we can do much better. We need to mobilize. Uh, we need to mobilize the public aid for development. It's 150 billion a year. The world investments is uh, 25,000 billion a year. So, how do we, uh, you know, come about to use this uh, uh, public investment? And you you talk about the tipping point. So, we need to switch uh, a number of players so that um, the success uh, comes about. So, Ashin Bembe, briefly to conclude this. Uh, uh, this part, uh, we heard Miriam Mindou said, uh, I um, is in us, uh, and how do we uh, uh, work on this to have uh, the I and the we open, to have an open identity, a dynamic identity, which makes possible to, uh, uh, to, to make room for the others and who also make it possible, as Rémi Rioux uh, said, uh, to uh, be on the side of others and not to be necessarily in the suspicion uh, uh, of, of, of what others have to say and and to to bring us and to position ourselves uh, um, you know in, in a more you know open way and to show more empathy and uh, I will pick up the the word uh, um, of the previous speakers to find uh, the, the um, you know more poetic because we are more we are poetic human beings I, I, I will Mohamed pick up the, this uh, formula of Mohammed and Bougar. So you said, how can we uh, proceed? Uh, Rémi has already indicated a number of uh, approaches, uh, which is uh, in progress uh, in the action of the AFD. So we can very well imagine that our uh, French African institutions uh, and international institutions um, embrace this same spirit. But if I were to add something uh, to what Rémi uh, said to us, I would say that above all, before anything else, we need to take the full measure of what that means to live on the same planet with other living beings, uh, whether they are animated or not. What does it mean to live together? It means, as far as I'm concerned, to learn how to care for it, to care for the planet, to learn uh, to repair it, you mentioned this word, reparation, to learn how to share it, the care, the re repair, and the sharing being, from that point of view, the very conditions of this sustainability and our sustainability. So, if we adopt this perspective. Therefore, what Rémi was saying uh, makes sense. So development is not just a technique. It's not 
only modalities of uh, financing. It's not just creating uh, enterprises. It's not just signing contracts. It's not just uh, uh, extending the influence of a country outside of its uh, own borders. It's not only feed the children and uh, care for the sick, uh, build roads and uh, railroads and airports. It's not only borrow money, um, incur debts, um, make profits over debts. Uh, it's, all of this is very important, of course, uh, but it's not um, all that development is. And development that um, um, you know, commits its own ways of uh, subsistence uh, is not uh, a way to do it. Uh, therefore, we need to go back to the uh, idea that uh, most uh, of the people who spoke in the film, uh, prepared by Sarah, um, and they insist on the fact that we need to go back to uh, what makes sense. But in a context, as I specified uh, just a minute ago, that uh, what is the major challenge is our planet going into a finite finite um, age where things are contracting, which demands that uh, we are together going to articulate uh, uh, a vision in common, which would be the consequence of a new planetary awareness, which would be a different one, in my opinion from uh, the old ideas of uh, cosmopolitanism, universalism. Uh, I'm talking about an awareness, a planetary uh, awareness. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the thing we would have in common would be the manifestation of this openness that would me make it uh, meet that we would not um, uh, satisfy ourselves with the with this identity. We could listen to you for hours, uh, Rémi and uh, uh, Achille, but uh, we will continue this uh, wonderful anniversary. So thanks again to both of you for this exchange. Um, and I will now give the floor uh, to uh, Asha for the rest of this wonderful anniversary. Thank you. I think they deserve a round of applause. Uh, thank you, Rémi. Thank you, Achille. So I would like to remind you that on the 2nd of December, well, today is the anniversary of the AFD, but the 2nd of December is a very important uh, day because it's the um, day uh, when we celebrate the abolition of slavery. So to build this new relationship which we need uh, uh, to uh, build with Africa. So some of you think the world of tomorrow, imagine uh, the rebound and uh, um, well, the people we are going to meet now uh, experiment, innovate, uh, and um, deploy a new solutions and initiatives in the in the field. So it's very encouraging. So uh, we will have the first live session. And uh, for the first live session, our first trip, uh, our first encounter, we will uh, go uh, halfway between Alger and Tripoli. We will go to Tunis, uh, Tunis of the neighborhoods and of urbanism, not those of uh, beaches and tourism. So uh, to talk about it, I would like to uh, welcome Audrey Giral napel who is um, in, in charge of uh, the Division for Urban um, Layout and uh, Housing. So, thank you, 
Ça va? For joining us, Audrey. So I was saying, Audrey, for those of you who are watching us uh, and those who are here in the Empire Theater, that you work in a division for the urban development, layout, and housing of AFD. So in which, uh, in, in 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 what way is the urban situation in Tunis is remarkable? because I understand it is. Uh, what you need to know is that Tunisia is one of the most, most urban country of the Mediterranean area. 70% of the population lives in cities, uh, and uh, uh, they concentrate on 10% of the territory. And the cities uh, grew through an, a very rapid uh, urban development, uh, which uh, uh, came from the exodus from the countryside, and uh, these new uh, neighborhoods are developing further away from the center and the employment, uh, and uh, they uh, develop uh, uh, in a way which is not connected to the uh, water and uh, public transportation, and it's more and more uh, social, um, you know, uh, um, uh, poverty. So what is uh, the uh, global answer? So for some 10 years uh, now, um, uh, there's the uh, social urgency. So Tunisia has engaged into a priority program for the renovation of the popular neighborhoods. The program is called Proville. It is uh, helped with uh, several uh, financial partners, uh, uh, starting with AFD, which was granted some 240 million for the improvement of cities uh, and the support of the uh, municipal level. So uh, Proville has two objectives. Uh, the first one is to improve uh, the quality of life and the condition of life of these neighborhoods, uh, of the, the inhabitants of these uh, neighborhoods. And the second is to support the uh, Tunisian state in the uh, sustainable development. Um, so at the end of the first Pro Proville program, this 860,000 uh, people uh, saw their conditions of life improved. And the second program is uh, uh, has an impact on 115 neighborhoods and 700 inhabitants. It has been reinforced with a positive uh, um, you know, program to enable the inhabitants to participate in the future of their neighborhoods. Uh, and this uh, um, is the uh, urban nursery. So the nursery is initiatives which was launched by the AFD, uh, which uh, um, has uh, taken uh, as an example, um, you know, Johannesburg, Sao Paulo, uh, Paris. So it's a, a temporary and a transitory urbanism with, um, as an objective, uh, the idea that inhabitants will take part in the conception of neighborhoods and the conception of the uh, layout. So it uh, requires a lot of consultation and uh, co-conception with inhabitants, but we will see it uh, uh, very quickly uh, for micro projects, which uh, uh, feeds into the large investment projects. So thank you, Audrey. Uh, so um, our guest uh, will um, talk to us about um, this uh, um, this um, project. Uh, so let's welcome Sidiba Meshkeni. Hello. I live in Tunis, and thanks to wonderful encounters, I've rediscovered my country, and I feel more involved every day. Today, three wonderful people I would like to present to you, people from the urban Pépinière project called Nes El Houma, a socioeconomic project that is unprecedented in Tunisia. So here is Takwa and Sabri Gyuli. Going to school wasn't always easy for these twins. Walking one kilometer was a problem, especially in winter, where rainfall would make crossing the rivers, the wet, quite difficult. The more well-to-do have maybe plastic boots and uh, raincoats, but that's not the case for everyone, unfortunately, today. The Bridge of Hope, built in collaboration with the Association of, of Social and Cultural Work in Sidi Marouen El Bokri in Tunis, not only facilitates the life of pupils like Sabri and Takwa, but that of all the inhabitants in this neighborhood who can therefore move around more easily for the school to be 
within reach of everyone. 400 kilometers away towards the south, let's meet Kmaïs Jawali. Kmaïs was different from a very young age. He left school where after he was born in uh, Metuya, in Gabes, because of difficulties with learning and also to help his family to survive by collecting bottles to be recycled today with the, with the fund from the urban uh, uh, nursery and thanks to support from the NACWA Association, he started this project of producing fertilizers. We install composters for waste at home in his neighborhood. Today, he earns a better living and he can help out his community. He's proud of being different today. Inspired by nature as well, Hanen Hachamor is a real entrepreneur. She's one of the rare people in our region of Bushema in Geb and in apiculture, and she understood that she was the only person to be working on transforming um, wax into perfume, candles, and cosmetic products. She always dreamt of opening up a shop to receive a woman from her region and help them to launch into this type of social entrepreneurship. She has opened up a, what you would call a third place. Each week, she receives women from her region and provides them with her assistance and with advice, helping them to embark upon this type of business. Uh, this is truly an spirit of entrepreneurship. This is me. This project, Nesel Huma, changed my life as well, and I'd like to share this with you. It all started with COVID and when I returned to Tunisia. During this difficult period for everyone, I was looking for a new opportunity, a professional opportunity, to better discover my country and also concrete social values. And that's how I joined an incubator of the group SOS Pulp in charge of support. So, supporting different organizations in civil society or training workshops or participative workshops in the different districts. Human contact is essential in my work. And project sponsors, the ones I presented to you, became sisters and brothers, in other words, a second family. I am very delighted to have had a positive impact on their lives. Thank you. Well, she really moved me. I knew that. She moved you, too. Audrey, with the urban nursery, with initiatives, this is all to foster a more global rehabilitation? Well, the interesting and innovative thing is really complementarity between micro-projects that are conducted locally, on the one hand, and structural investments at national level. What's noteworthy as well is the dialogue and links through these nurseries between civil society, inhabitants and inhabitants in these districts, and at institutional level, the Urban Renovation Agency in Tunisia implementing projects, and through this mechanism also evolved in this way of designing projects, and a strong dimension that Selima showed us, temporality, the time factor. These projects were set up very quickly in the short term with an immediate impact, changing things straight away, as you saw, with the third place, impactful projects that uh, very often take many years to be implemented. So we can see that this participation and this reconstruction in the final analysis helps to improve uh, the rollout of projects and their impacts above all. Thank you.
In five years' time, city man, where would you be? What should you be doing? Oh, let's hope. I'll still be serving my community. Oh, great. Maybe I too will embark upon my own adventure as a social entrepreneur, be it in uh, urban farming or transformation and renewable energy. Let's hope so. Thank you. A round of applause for Selima. Thank you, Audrey, and thank you, Selima. Thanks, too, to the partners who are by your side. Thank you so much. We're still in Africa, but further west, between Togo, Benin, and Guinea. A program enables young girls to be emancipated to sports and gender equality and to assert themselves. Let's speak with Laura George and Benjamin Coudert. Bonjour tous les deux, ça va? Hello to both of you. Bonjour, Are you okay? Benjamin. Hello Laura, Et hello Benjamin. Thanks for joining us. Maybe the people in the room know Laura. For those who are interested in football anyway, a wonderful career, Laura. All the fans of women's football, you know her with 188 selections to the national team, and you're now in defense. So, Laura is the Secretary General of the French Football Federation. So, there's a life after the field. Hello, everyone. Of course, there's a life after the field, after a career in sports. Sports was just one step. It was a wonderful school of life. I, learned, I, I learned adversity, defeat. You also learn to lose. I also learned solidarity and sharing. And today, I'm trying to uh, do the utmost with that in my federations. So are you teaching your six-year-old daughter? I teach my six-year-old son to lose. That's tough. So you are in sports, acknowledged by everyone, I would say. AFD has focused on this strategic program. Can you tell us about champions? Thank you, Asha, and hello, everyone. Sports is a wonderful lever for sustainable development and social cohesion, and is recognized today internationally. AFD adopted a strategy two years ago to use sports for sustainable development goals and contributing to this goal, which is called 100% social ties. Football is a wonderful universal language that federates. Football transcends fields and borders, emancipating oneself. It is this conviction that brought us together, the French Football Federation, FIFA and us, AFD. The fight against discriminatory practices against women and girls, we launched a program called Champions Around Football, implemented in three countries, Togo, Benin, and Guinea, via the Plan International NGO and its local branches. We use the expertise of three different but complementary structures, AFFF and FIFA for the alliance between football and development, AFD for sustainable development, and the NGO International Plan for Deficient Volatile Projects in the Field. You spoke about, you tell us more about champions later on, but Laura, women's emancipation to sports, you live through it, so you have a good experience of that, and I imagine that you encourage this. Of course, I encourage it. You know, starting football, it was, for you, maybe fun. But quickly, we realize it's not just for fun. It's not at all fun. A woman, when she plays football, she can also become a professional. So the ambition of doing sports and making it her profession to be recognized for that. Today, I'm really delighted that we can and that AFD can support the sports program alongside Plan International and FIFA and us, the Federation, we can also and our support, because making girls play, that means giving them consideration. In France and in Europe, we believe that everything is normal to do sports. 
I can tell you that it's easy for these women, but in Africa, it's a way of enabling them to go beyond their homes and to have their own activities, to have some consideration, to feel proud. And in development, people like to talk about development, but just the fact of listening to people and putting them to the fore, feeling strong and feeling that you're recognized, people need that. So this is what we do through our programs. You let the girls play, and there's a pride, sense of pride that comes out. Thanks, Laura. And champions, how is that organized? Well, the program, as I said before, it is implemented in three countries through Plan International, or the local branches of Plan International NGO in Guinea, Togo, and Benin. It seeks to do support 5,400 girls over the next three years. So the young beneficiaries between 12 and 24 years of age will benefit from modernized infrastructures and adequate equipment, enabling them to live together harmoniously between men and women players. So the field becomes a place to develop, to emancipate oneself, to share. And with this type of program, we are truly in a strategic area of AFD in the theme gender equality and also on the strategy 100% social ties. Thank you, Benjamin. Laura. Tom Body is a national player from Guinea Conakry and took part in the Champions Program. The fifth wave uh, took away her plane ticket. She could have been with us, but luckily we'll see her good humor and enthusiasm through a self-interview of Tom Body. Let's take a look. I discovered football when I was six. During the match, where I was playing alone with young kids in my district. What do your family think? My family was totally against my wanting to play football. They thought the sport was only for boys. How did you discover the Champions Program? I discovered the Champions Program thanks to our delegation that came in to detect the talents in my this town where I was born. It's been three years now that I'm in a training center uh, called the Academy of Leagues of Football Federation Guinea Conakry. The path I followed wasn't easy at all, but with my determination, my abnegation, I made myself accepted in the program. Today, I go to school to play football. I take my own decisions and my family is proud of me. I managed to find my own path without offending my parents. In my community today, the activities that we practice with men are accepted. In the field of football, above all. What would your program like without it today? This program it came to reach out to me with FIFA. I would be married today, married with several children, without being able to make my dreams come true. And your career in three, five years' time? In three to five years' time, I think my career will be at the top. If you have to embrace professionalism, even, and your life, my life will be fulfilled once I make my dreams come true and I've uh, catered to the needs of my family. My greatest dream today is to be an international football player, having a good diploma for the rest of my career to be able to defend the cause of women at every level. To all the girls who listen to me, don't lose hope. Think of your dreams, and when obstacles stand in your way, say to yourself that anything that a man can do, a woman can. Thank you. She is wonderful, Tombadi. A very powerful and clear message, Laura. And Benjamin, what's your message for the young people listening to you? Well, my message for the young people is to believe in your dreams, of course, and realize that everything is possible, everything, when you truly believe. You often have young people who believe that football means becoming a professional. It's leading a life to become rich. But it's above all doing things with your heart and enjoying what you do. When you do things with your heart, things just follow. 
when you're doing things for the right reasons. The second message for parents, you can have a determination to play football, but if you're not supported by your parents and by your educators, sometimes your wings are cut off and you can't go very far. So my message for parents is push your children. Listen to their heart, encourage them. You will determine their success. And my third message is for you. You're here. Some of you have a chance to, to have an impact on decisions, helping with projects. A message for you is quite simply, don't hesitate to invest in sports, of course because it can really change lives. Because investing in sports means giving a chance to young people to play. Uh, that means helping them to express themselves. And investing in women's sports, in women, that means thinking of tomorrow's generation, women who will be leaders, women who will be leaving the streets, women who will want to accomplish far more, because you have that possibility. You have the opportunity of reaching out to people and making their lives change for tomorrow. At any rate, thank you, and that is what I desire to pass on to you as my message. Thank you, Laura. And Benjamin, maybe just a quick word for those who are listening to us who like to connect to the Champions Program. All the information is available on the AFD website. We have uh, programs that are available. You can find out more about our partnership between AFD, FIFA, and the French Football Federation and Sports and Development for the SDGs are available. Don't hesitate to contact us to be committed as well. Congratulations for you. Thank you, Lauren Benjamin. A round of applause. Stay with me. Let's change directions, ladies and gentlemen. Crossing the Atlantic, arriving in the country, and its name opens up your imagination. Brazil. Menagerais. Here you see your uh, next guest who speaks very good French, but will switch to English for this sequence, unless you speak Portuguese, which I don't. Let's welcome Sergio Gusmao Suchodolski. <laughs> Hello everyone, uh, bonjour à toutes et à tous. Quel plaisir de vous joindre ici à Paris. Merci AFD, merci Rémi pour l'invitation. Thank you so much. I will talk a little bit about Minas Gerais. This is where Brazil started. This is where some of the colonial cities, 500 year old cities of Brazil are located. This is where natural beauty is there. And this is where we also face some very relevant development challenges. We look at the natural beauty of our state, where many of the relevant rivers of Brazil are born, like River San Francisco and Valle do Rio Doce. We look at where some of the most uh, important colonial cities are present, like Ouro Preto, which used to be the richest city in the Americas uh, in the 18th century. We look at our capital city of Belo Horizonte, the third largest city of Brazil, where, you know, a metropolitan area of five million people, where we have many, many challenges, challenges that we are able to work together and mobilize resources with the French Development Agency to fulfill our mandate as a development bank of the 21st century. In this city, we started working in, back in 2013. So I invite you to come with me and take a journey in time and space and go back eight years, so 10% of AFD's life. Here, we were able to sign our first agreement of 31 million euros to finance many different sites. First, renewable energy uh, projects as the one we see here. 
We have finance, uh, sustainable projects, including in the health uh, sector. And we have finance, also the cleaning of the postcard lagoon of the city of Belo Horizonte and a very important water source. Here you see also the little church, which is Oscar Niemeyer's first relevant piece of architecture project. Bear in mind that Oscar Niemeyer is one of the architects that contributed to building the uh, uh, headquarters of the French Communist Party here in Paris of uh, many uh, pieces of relevant architecture all around the world, including the headquarters of the UN in New York, and of course, the built of Brasilia, the capital city and planned city of uh, Brazil. We have also worked together in sustainable transportation in a very important project called Mobi Centro that links the downtown of Belo Horizonte to the outskirts, providing quality services to those who have to take uh, the transportation every day, especially in the least development regions of our capital city. We're now arriving in 2020. The pandemic, COVID, has hit us very hard. Everybody is worried about their jobs. Everybody, especially the micro, small, uh, and medium entrepreneurs, are facing liquidity problems. Uh, they are trying to find a solution. And there again, the French Development Agency has partnered with BDMG, and we have celebrated a 70 million euro agreement in the middle of uh, the most crucial and difficult times of the pandemic in August 2020. Again, we were able to finance projects uh, in municipalities. Uh, we have been able to back some small entrepreneurs uh, as uh, Pat Jet here, who is a real client of ours, who were able to receive those funds and relaunch uh, his business in more sustainable ways during the pandemic and retain jobs altogether. More than 5,000 jobs were retained because of the support of this on-landing program between Agence Française de Développement and BDMG. We have also worked together with uh, Vovó, which is uh, one of the most famous uh, sweet uh, uh, and cake makers in our good city. Uh, she has also a group of women who work with us. She's one of, uh, uh, one of the beneficiaries of our gender finance a program, a specific program for small and uh, micro entrepreneur uh, and companies that are led by female entrepreneurs. So is, this is a real case with a direct impact uh, with SDG uh, 5. And uh, least but last but not least, also we've been working together in public lightning. This is one of the crucial uh, uh, areas uh, where we work together with the French Development Agency, both in the project preparation side, but also on the energy efficiency, which has all kinds of positive impacts in security, uh, of uh, 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 business attraction, of quality of life. And this is a real case in a very small town of Minas Gerais, Andrelândia. We should also look at uh, recycling. This is one of our uh, champions, in, and he's a, a owner of a micro small company that does um, uh, waste recycling in the state of Minas Gerais, and he have been uh, able to receive support from BDMG through the partnership with the F French Development Agency. We're now looking at the future. We are living in a time of climate emergency. Remy has talked about uh, Glasgow. I was there as well. And we have uh, learned a lot and partnered with many uh, multilateral development banks, French development agency. We saw our governments and also the private sector taking up very relevant commi uh, commitments. This is a time of emergency. We need to partner for the future. We're just a few weeks to sign the first blended finance program of a Brazilian development bank 
with Agence Française de Développement. We are very uh, happy with this agreement. We are also working in the project preparation in order to attract private capital for sustainable infrastructure projects such as renewable energy, energy efficiency, waste to energy projects, roads, sustainable roads, and all kinds of water and sewage projects. Thank you so much for having me here today, and I look forward to continuing working with l'Agence Française de Développement. Merci beaucoup, merci à tous. Thank you, thank you Sergio for this very instructive uh, travel in space and time. Yes, uh, so let's welcome Lucy, you agree? Right, so please join me ladies and gentlemen to welcome Lucy Astier-Such. <laughs> Lucy, you are the Financial Systems Project Officer at the AFD, and uh, we've seen uh, in, in our journey through time, and we've seen uh, Minas Gerais, AFD has been supporting the Brazilian state uh, for a while and collaborating with the Banco de Desenvolvimento. I made it. <laughs> so have you been working for that long for BMDG? You look very young, though. Yeah, not that long. Uh, <laughs> good, good afternoon, everyone. No, I've been working with BDMG for four years now, even though it does feel like we have known each other forever because uh, BDMG has always been a natural partner for us because I think Sergio presented it very well, but because really of the knowledge of the territory and also because of BDMG's key role in financing public and private investment. And if we go back in time in 2013, it was really a series of firsts. Um, for IFD, it was the first project with a development bank in Brazil. And for BDMG, it was also the first project with an international donor. So as you can imagine, it was a learning curve, but we built every step of our partnership together. And so I won't come back on all of the projects because this was very nice photos and presentation, but I would like to highlight the strategic partnership that we built. Um, um, beside the credit lines, we also built a technical cooperation with BDMG. And in 2013, we focused on supporting BDMG in becoming a green pioneer um, in, fin for, in a pioneer in green finance in Brazil. Uh, but we didn't stop there. So in 2020, um, by supporting BDMG's needs to answer the pandemic and also to prepare the for the recovery, we supported the bank with a technical cooperation in its alignment with the SDG. And also we are supporting BDMG really in becoming a leader in SDG finance um, in Brazil. Um, so I would say that our partnership has really evolved in time. So it's like a fine wine. It's improving and it's only <laughs> will get better in the next years. You agree, Sergio? Fine wine? I, yes, I <laughs> always agree with Lucy. Always agree with her. Right, Lucy, probably, maybe if you could give us some insights on, on you know, some, one of the projects, the actions that have been implemented uh, on the field during that period. Yeah, um, if I go a little bit broader, in Minas Gerais, we worked with other actors. So we work with BDMG, but we also work with the state of Minas Gerais and the environment uh, department of the state in Minas Gerais. Um, in order to answer to the state's priority. But I think it would be clearer if I speak about figures a bit. <laughs> oh yeah, finance, figures. Exactly. Works uh, together. So, as a result of our partnership with the state of Minas Gerais, we supported the implementation of basic sanitation systems. So one, more than one million people got access to drinkable water and sanitation system. Uh, more than 20,000 rural households got also access to the electricity grid and 60 municipalities developed a um, waste system. And this was enabled by our cooperation to the state budget and also to the public policy implementation. But what we also tried to do in Minas Gerais is trying to connect the public policy side to the investment side. And for this, we did work with the state and some French partners in order to develop a climate platform called Climana Practica, which tries to disseminate good practices among investors, public and private, and to connect project sponsors to technical support and financial support. And we also supported the state's territorial climate and energy plan, which obviously is a policy plan, but mostly it tries to foster sustainable infrastructure development. 
And I would say that in all of this landscape, BDMG is really central because of its, it's at the crossroad between public policy and investment. And just to add some more figures to Sergio, what Sergio has said in a, as a result of our partnership, um, since our first uh, credit line, more than 55,000 people got access to sanitation, more than 2 million people got access to sustainable transportation. So as you, and, uh, yeah, and so as you can see, we have really tried to focus on the state's priority, which are adaptation and mitigation to climate change, and also now social and sustainable development. So I would, as a conclusion, I would say that I hope that we'll be here in 10 years just to talk about the next phases of our collaboration. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you very much. So, Sergio, if we continue our journey in time and look forward, what is your vision of Minas Gerais, let's say, in the next 80 years? Well, I think that we have a challenge ahead of us. We live in uh, a time of climate emergency. We are in the decade of action of the SDGs. We are uh, committed to the Addis Ababa action agenda to finance development. Uh, I think that we need to fulfill our duties. As 21st century development banks, we need to partner with the likes of close partners as the Agence Francaise de Développement. We need to learn from our peers through the networks that we are building together. And I should refer to one initiative that Rémi, myself, Idri, FMDV have launched which is the Alliance for Development of Subnational Development Banks in Latin America and the Caribbean. We should find solutions that work in Africa, in Asia, in Latin America, and put our balance sheets to work. We should fulfill the duty that we have in the 21st century, as General de Gaulle has fulfilled his duty in 1941 and when he imagined and founded Agence Francaise de Développement. Sergio Lucy, thank you very much. Thank you. And we are going to remain in Brazil, but this time with some music, right? So before that, let's take some news from elsewhere. Right, there was supposed to be some music, but you know, it's live. Thank you, Sergio. I can, you, Sergio. I I can, can sing. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> voilà. Ah, Thank you. So, uh, this uh, first part of the live sessions is concluding. You'll see the second part is just as rich, so you'll see many things later. So, let's see what uh, it's inspired you. And uh, there are many of you, some 4,000 of you. So, do not uh, hesitate to uh, exchange, to make your observations on the platform, on the streaming platforms, on, or on the social networks. Um, uh, so, you uh, can do the same in the room, so please not, do not hesitate, uh, uh, because we received a lot of uh, uh, testimonies, and some of them are, are connected. Uh, so some people are commenting from Guinea Conakry, from Tunisia, from Senegal, uh, from uh, the Lebanon, from Haiti, from Guadeloupe, from Madagascar, from the United States, from Angola, from Bena, from the Comora, Comoros. Um, so uh, we are very, uh, very touched. and. Uh, uh, I think uh, we will uh, get a number of comments uh, later on. I will have uh, time to read some of your comments, uh, very positive comments. Uh, we had many observations uh, for large projects, uh, uh, positive, um, uh, 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 positive comments uh, uh, for the micro projects, for the champions who fight against uh, uh, stereotypes, as in uh, the case in football. So thank you for your comments. Um, so I think the uh, group uh, behind me is ready. So another uh, uh, voyage was getting ready. Uh, was I talk to you? We stay in Brazil, uh, so we will now have. Uh, uh, um, a musical journey called 
from Dom Lanena. Hello, it's an honor to be here. Um, thank you very much. And I will um, sing a few songs. I've grown up in France and Brazil and all over the place, so I'll try to embark you. Sí, 
Mas passam raros as E o meu peito te desabrocha Eu não tenho casa não Vivo na maré Ela me leva a você E onde eu quiser Ele pode me acalmar Como não pode ninguém Eu não tenho casa não Vivo na maré Eu não tenho casa não Vivo na maré Ela me leva a você E onde eu quiser Ele pode me acalmar Como não pode ninguém Eu não tenho casa não
Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. I will sing a last song. It's called Milonga. It's a rhythm that comes from the south of Brazil, from Argentina, from Paraguay. It's this region of the Pampa, and I come from there. I come from the south of Brazil, and uh, it's a rhythm. It's a, a, a tradition which is very, um, you know, which is found in in our culture. There are different kinds of milongas in our culture. There is one that's uh, like a tango. There's one that uh, has more rhythm. I I grew up uh, between these various milongas, and uh, I have uh, my own mix of milongas. So thank you very much for the AFD uh, for having invited me. Uh, happy anniversary! It's very inspiring, and uh, I'll see you soon.
Merci, Dom. Thank you, Dom Lanena. Merci. Thank you. And we're back, uh, and we're happy to share with you this uh, anniversary, this 80th year anniversary with all of you um, behind your screens uh, who are following and on the social networks. Uh, I will take advantage of this to thank you because all over the world uh, there are many of you to wish uh, AFD a happy anniversary. And uh, thank you for your congratulations, uh, for your proof of uh, uh, sympathy, and uh, thank you. Uh, we received lots of messages. Uh, I said no uh, portable phones, uh, no cell phones, but I have uh, the right uh, to have it, uh, uh, to uh, look at the uh, messages that we get from all over the world. Uh, so thank you. We shall continue with the next uh, session. We talked about uh, innovating and assess to, find, to fight against poverty. It's uh, the whole commitment of our new speakers uh, that you know very well, the Nobel Prize of Economy and uh, uh, chairwoman of the uh, Fund for Innovation for Development, uh, Esther Duflo. Hello, Esther. Thank you for being with us. Uh, uh, unfortunately, you're not here in the public, but we are happy to see you on the screen. Uh, you see how important it is to innovate to fight against poverty, but also to assess the impact of our interventions. Uh, so what uh, lessons can you draw from your work? Uh, what uh, issues of research seem to me seem to you the most important? Uh, and so we're celebrating the anniversary of the AFD how to uh, you know work together between the world of research and that of the uh, f development finance institutions uh, so thank you everyone uh, I'm sorry for not being here in uh, physically and uh, happy anniversary to the AFD on the occasion of its uh, 80th birthday unfortunately this uh, 80 years um, you know anniversary uh, take place in a difficult uh, time for the world in development in particular each uh, time uh, we seem to be out of the woods uh, it seems that uh, things get worse as we've seen recently with the uh, a uh, new uh, variant of the, of the uh, COVID-19 Omicron. And it's uh, uh, very sad to, s to say that for the 80th uh, anniversary of the AFD, but it's a crisis in which uh, uh, the Western country, not particularly France, but uh, countries in general, have uh, uh, failed uh, so to speak, uh, in their mission vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world, their uh, mission of uh, cooperation and development. Uh, not only the institution for the financing, uh, f such as AFD, and essentially the financing uh, institution as AFD, but uh, more generally uh, the policies uh, for fight against poverty and cooperation. So this is why it is important on the occasion of the 80th uh, anniversary, to be honest, uh, uh, when it comes to this observation, to see how we can change things in the next 80 years, uh, which I hope will be very uh, fruitful. So why am I, uh, am I using uh, the word failure? Because it's vis-a-vis -vis what I think is the objective uh, of the policies uh, for international cooperation and solidarity. Um, and maybe it's controversial, but I will uh, say uh, what it is for me. It's not uh, interest or question of honor, uh, or it's uh, a question of uh, uh, being able to cover uh, as uh, you know. Um, rightly as possible its own strategy for development uh, and why and how to do it uh, uh, what are uh, the instruments that that uh, an institution such as the AFD and more generally um, the international cooperation has uh, I think there are three uh, such uh, instruments uh, 
uh, first of all, to be a quick uh, actor, uh, an efficacious uh, actor in circumstances of crisis, of intense crisis, uh, be it a pandemic, uh, an earthquake, uh, uh, or in the next future, uh, the uh, climate change. Uh, uh, because the rich countries have the capacity to borrow money uh, to face a crisis, but the, the poor countries do not have this capacity. So to, uh, to, to, to uh, number two, um, share um, the new technologies uh, and protection of the environment or the planet, and number three, uh, the support uh, for innovation, as you mentioned it, uh, uh, in you know, with the aim of uh, enabling the country to have uh, just uh, um, policies and to spend their budget in the best way possible. Um, so, if we take these three instruments, um, these three objectives uh, of international cooperation, during the COVID crisis, there were many opportunities uh, uh, to act upon them, and it was not done. Uh, the uh, financial solidarity did not take place. Uh, rich countries spent 20% uh, uh, for uh, of their budget for um, uh, for the support because they didn't find uh, an efficient way to uh, they, they they drew on on special drawing rights uh, uh, to enable them uh, they didn't do this for, to enable them to countries uh, uh, for, for, for uh, tr financial transfer for to help their population um, the uh, um, there was a catastrophe when it comes to the vaccines, uh, uh, vaccine and the support for innovation, and it was uh, not sufficient. Uh, paradoxically, it's uh, very uh, strange that in South Africa they don't have the material necessary material, which uh, to to continue to work on uh, the sequencing of the virus uh, uh, for the Omicron variant uh, because the response to uh, well. To to, 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 they were capable of identifying uh, the uh, virus, so they closed uh, uh, the flight. So they don't even have the material. When we talk about support for innovation, we're not there yet. Uh, so what does it say uh, about um, how to move forward? Uh, I think it's important to uh, to 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 say that there was a failure. Once again, it's not a failure for France, not a very, even a failure for Europe. Um, it's uh, a, a failure for uh, global le leadership, uh, and then also an opportunity uh, for France uh, and uh, for the AFD in particular uh, to uh, draw the lessons, to understand why there was this failure and to uh, to, 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 to think uh, how we must uh, uh, think the next eight years to have an action on these three uh, instruments uh, when the opportunity arises. So first of all, we need to have a budget which is sufficiently flexible and elastic to uh, meet uh, very efficiently the crisis, uh, uh, you know, such as the COVID-19. And there will be more in the future, uh, whether it's a pandemic or a climate uh, catastrophe. So to be able to have the budget to trigger uh, very quickly, not to wait for a few months to be able to spend a few more millions, uh, but to spend uh, uh, in a matter of days a few billion. Uh, the second, um, uh, that's uh, the uh, insurance function. The second, the, the uh, transfer of public goods. Uh, uh, so to, to think uh, of uh, setting up to, to rethink uh, in the, the, the 50s, we were much better in doing so. Uh, we shared the antibiotics, uh, we shared the green uh, revolution. We're not able to share the vaccines, uh, whether it's in, in, in terms of for property rights or the vaccines themselves. Uh, uh, so uh, the multilateral uh, institution uh, thought it would uh, cost $50 billion uh, to vaccinate 50% uh, of the world. If we had done it, we would not have the situation in which we find ourselves today. And finally, supporting innovation. So today, uh, it uh, it's the spearhead of the AFD, uh, the general action of AFD, and the creation 
you know, uh, on the part of the chairman with the financial support and with the uh, joint financing of the Ministry of Finance uh, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, that, uh, you know, I'd like to thank in passing for uh, creating this innovation fund. So this uh, FID, the, F the Fund for Innovation for Development, uh, uh, what we'll talk about a bit uh, later, will be an example of how uh, we would uh, fundamentally uh, put at the heart of the action of, the e of bilateral uh, institution of VFD, and uh, it can s set an example for the rest of the world, uh, the example of what we need to uh, 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 to bring to the countries who want to carry out their own policies. It's not so much the technical advice or ideas of what they need to do uh, of values, but is this to say, what well, you want to do this, uh, uh, you want to meet this objective. Uh, this is uh, the experience we we uh, have had in, in the past and what worked and what did not work. Uh, and this is above all how you can carry out your own experiment uh, to learn what would be efficient for you and to create uh, uh, a database which will be able to to disseminate around the world and that would change uh, you know because we put innovation at the heart of this project uh, uh, to, to put it at the heart of the dialogue with the developing countries uh, it's not just uh, efficacious efficient but it's uh, it changes the very nature of the partnership uh, because it's not about charity uh, uh, it's not uh, about giving advice it's a question of being a partner um, as as uh, a capital risk partner is a partner of the entrepreneur who develops um, and uh, in, uh, innovates uh, risky uh, innovations. Some will work, some will not, uh, and uh, uh, some will create a social value and uh, uh, well-being for the world, which goes beyond uh, the benefit for which uh, it was, uh, um, you know, taken. And I will stop at that for the moment because it was a, a very long answer to to your question. And uh, I think it's important to 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 uh, bring about these points and to give the context in which uh, uh, they are. So I think it's vital to rethink, totally rethink uh, the nature of the uh, international cooperation and solidarity, uh, if only because the developing countries uh, are tired, they're uh, exhausted, they're a bit uh, disgusted by what happened uh, during the COVID crisis. Uh, thank you, Esther Duflo. Uh, let's uh, welcome. Juliette uh, Seban, who will tell us more about the uh, Innovation Fund for Development. Hello, Juliette. Juliette Seban, donc vous êtes uh, la directrice. Juliette, you're the executive director of the Innovation Fund for Development, BID, and chaired by Esther one year after it was launched. What are the achievements? Thank you. Before speaking about achievements, let me talk about how the Innovation Fund for Development was set up. As Esther said, it was created in December 2020, just one year ago, when we had the first Presidential Development Council, a presidential initiative following the lines of the recommendations of the report on modernizing the development and national solidarity uh, program. It is chaired by FLO, uh, hosted by the AFD, based on a uh, management board and a review board with people from research, innovation, and international solidarity to grant subsidies independently. So that's how we were founded. One year after the announcement, announcements, our achievements are positive and encouraging. They are clearly identified today by our partners in a context where needs, new needs and challenges, as Ashil Bembe said this afternoon, calls for new innovative, sustainable solutions that may have a significant impact on the living conditions of the most vulnerable. These are the challenges facing the uh, Fund for Development. We have succeeded, or rather received, over 1,000 innovative projects. It's a call for uh, projects that was launched online. As Esther said, any organization, NGOs, startups, research funds, wherever they are located around the world, may apply for funding by FID. We have about one-third of applications related to 
four countries that have priorities for French policy for development, three quarters for the early stages of development, where we need they need seeder, seeding funds. Amongst the applications, we selected 15 first projects. The first projects by bid that are not being contractualized, nine in a priority country. We hope to tell you more soon, but to say a few words about it here. Innovation is about having a strong potential impact and being able to transform public policies. For example, we finance projects in all sectors. For example, developing a solar refrigeration cooling technology in the Ivory Coast, a prevention cream against uh, malaria in Burkina Faso, a digital platform to improve access to justice for precarious workers in Mexico, implementing a sensitization program to reduce stigmatization linked to menstruation in Madagascar, or scaling up a program for students in Ghana. And this program has already been impactful in several countries, and we're now scaling it up. Applications submitted to FID bear on many different themes, health, education, climate. It can be social, technological, organizational. What matters is the potential impact of scaling up to transform public policies. As Esther said, to conclude, FID seeks to attract innovation in all areas, wherever it comes from, taking risks regarding the players and the type of solutions. And this is what we observe in this after one year of operations. Let me seize the opportunity to thank all the teams helping us to develop this initiative. Many of them are here today. And it is truly a collective adventure. A round of applause for them. Thank you, Viviane Esther Duflo. So we'll follow all of that with great attention. Moving on now to the Indian Ocean. It's not far from where I come from, the island I was where I was born, even though I live in France today, but I was born in Mauritius. Just close by. Not Madagascar, we'll go into Reunion Island. So far, we spoke about energy with Juliet. Until recently, Reunion was highly dependent on fossil energy. They're targeting 100% renewable energy by 2023. Our next guest is a pioneer in solar energy on the island with a model that is innovative and remarkable. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Eric Scotto, Chairman of Agro Energy. Bonjour à toutes. Hello, everyone. One and all. I'm here to talk about the new another anniversary, not the AFD anniversary, but the anniversary of a project that is probably the one we are the most proud of in my small companies that has been around for 20 years now, Barzur. It's uh, the emerging dawn in our local language. It started by chance. As you said before, where we, how to arrive at 100% in renewable energy on our island, 100 kilometers long, with a volcano occupying 80% of the surface area, how can you be independent in terms of energy and food? That has been an obsession since 2007 in Reunion. Every day, not quite. But when we went to Saint-Pierre and we had to go in front of the uh, jail in the port and I saw an empty land around the prison, that was a pity, all of that unused land around the prison. So we were bold and pushed the doors of the jail, and we met with the director of the penitentiary center who trusted us and was sensitive to the idea of being the first to build a solar farm occupying that space and the farming project within the penitentiary. Great. How can we convince the state? convince the administration. We tried to be convincing. We imagined the project. 
The project started the day I organized a, a press meeting with the national press to tell them, listen, it's not utopia. One day we'll do it. We'll manage to reach the level of solar energy that will be enormous on the grid, and here is how we will do it. So I brought this group to the dining hall in the jail. There were rumors amongst the prisoners, and one prisoner, André, explained the hope that this project generated for some prisoners who saw in this project a new future for them. And all the journalists cried. Everyone was crying at the end of that presentation. I'm still touched by that 10 years later on. On top of emotions, OK, we go forward, and all of a sudden, it stopped working. There was a lot of tension with respect to financing. In Reunion, private banks stopped financing, changes in laws. And I said, we can't stop here with this project that generates so much hope. So many people are banking on this project. So I went to see the AFD, and I must say today that without AFD that day, that project would never have come about. What is the project? Three intuitions and three innovations. A technological innovation that was extraordinary. Think 10 years back in time, nine megawatts of solar energy in the prison, but coupled with nine megawatt hours of storage. What is the cornerstone of renewable without storage and a mix of both? You cannot circle the problem of intermittence, especially on an island such as ours. The first time technology supplying 14,000 homes. First, agricultural project, too. We wanted to prove that thanks to this system you can see on screen with anti cyclonic uh, infrastructures, we could have a certain autonomy and food security. If this is a cyclonic zone with uh, tropical storms all the time, more and more. This solution of, of allowed us to work on food security and autonomy. For, from organic, quickly became permaculture, and AFD came in again. I convinced Marc Dubernay, and I'd like to thank him and his team, that what we were doing was magical and would mark people's minds in future. It may become the norm of tomorrow. So I convinced him to take part in funding a film called Tomorrow. If you saw Tomorrow, or if you haven't seen it, if, you haven't, if you've seen it, watch it again. Badzur is in demand. The film, the work site, and explain the beginnings of what would happen with this project. We didn't know that it would win uh, an award for the best documentary, and it would be shown at the COP years later on, but AFD was there too. A third innovation, a responsibility in the territory. Not just food autonomy and energy autonomy, but looking at what we could do for society. What do we represent in terms of uh, the fallout for the populations living in these territories. And here, we convinced the judge for the application of penalties and the administration to let us for 20 years, even though the project has been wrong for 42 years, over 20 years, we said we would train 150 prisoners. And it's all a matter of common sense. If you propose to these prisoners jobs of tomorrow, organic producers under an anti-cyclonic structure, we may be successful in reintegration. And now, 10 years later on, André, who made us all shed tears, still works on the teams, the maintenance team, and that is something we're very proud of. We wanted to show with this hopeful project that with goodwill and determination, good partners, and AFD was a good partner then, maybe in the final analysis, what we imagined that's the world of tomorrow, Today, I can tell you that the world of tomorrow is already today at Bajzur, and we're exporting this model around the world. Thanks. Thank you, Eric. Please stay with me. Thank you. And let us now welcome Adama Gitete. Adama Djetete, 
you're in charge of the project team in the private sector of the Department of the Three Oceans at AFD. Are you okay? Hello. Eric, great. What's he like? What do you mean? Didn't you learn how to speak Creole? That's, I used Creole a while ago. Okay, anyway, Eric, it's great. How many people did you train in these new trades, professions? 53 people were lucky to spend an average of 10 months of training. Initially, it was very much focused on uh, apiculture, organic, and vegetable growing. And then we quickly moved on to permaculture. It is only penitentiary with a permaculture project in the world with 53 people, but I hope we will train at least another 150 people over the remaining 14 years for this project, even though we are 42 years old. So we still have time to imagine other types of training. And this unique bad sewer model, did you think of replicating it? We thought about that straight away. I immediately went to the prison in Fren. You may think I spent my life in prison. It's because the services were there, and I tried to convince them, and so far we haven't replicated the model. I must say the model is linked to the people who sponsor it. I'd like to thank the three directors of the different prisons that uh, were by your side to uh, promote this model. It's all linked to people's will. Honestly, today, the person who asked me to replicate this model was the Greek prime minister who asked me for the next prison to be built in Greece to replicate Bansur. So we may draw inspiration from it outside of our borders, but I hope we'll be able to do so elsewhere in France too. And what are the main challenges uh, for your clients today? The main challenges for clients today? 20 years ago, when I started Renewable Energy, they took us for utopians. We had to convince constantly. 50 years ago, people in finance to help us. Today, I think we've made it. Today, our clients, what they ask us to do is to accelerate. How? Now that renewable energies are energy, how can we accelerate? And that is the top demand from our clients. Adama, turning to you, how did AFD participate in this private funding project? Did commercial banks didn't pro commercial banks uh, answer your call? I would answer my question, recalling that AFD finances the private sector overseas for years now. No one, everyone doesn't know that. And we do that by applying the principle of complementarity, meaning we do not compete with commercial banks that are already in operations on those territories, but we lend support to them in joint financing. To answer your question about Bowser, as Eric Scotto said earlier, commercial banks were present, providing three thirds of two thirds of the long term funding was a missing third. In a special context, where the tax incentives stopped for those projects, and AFD stepped in and was called upon, and uh, and uh, sat down at the table as well. So this was the momentum that uh, we followed in the doctrine of complementarity and subsidiarity. So non-competition, but complementarity then. Yes. The Bansu model is quite unique. Did you help out with other projects in Reunion? Four others, yes, sponsored by Aquo Energy. These were agri-energy projects with uh, renewable energy generation agriculture for about 27 million euros of funding. We also supported other sponsors. To give an idea, over the past 10 years, we mobilized approximately 90 million euros for renewable energy for the private sector in Reunion to support the energy transition in these territories. So we were in the Indian Ocean. Are there other regions where you would like to collaborate once again with Aqua Energy? Everywhere, I would say, everywhere. We have an idea. We have an idea. Go ahead. I think that was a good question. He has lots of ideas. I can see it. Well, 
Let me remind you first that the agri-energy concept that was created 15 years now is very relevant uh, overseas, which are very often islands with very little availability of land, but rich by biodiversity. We would be delighted to reiterate cooperation and partnerships that we had with ACUO on Bart Sur and the four other projects I mentioned earlier, elsewhere in the French West Indies, in Mayotte, or even more challenging projects, leveraging custom land in Polynesia, French Polynesia, New Caledonia. As you know, we exported Bansu to New Caledonia, adding the addition of uh, the, the, the custom-based uh, populations in capital, one, two, three percent, but we do it together. To launch this first project, we'll have a second then afterwards, a, a third, an important one, and I hope I will call on Remy and his team to support us because it will be a very important project for us, so we'll talk about it soon. We're already there, right, in Mauritius, in solar, and we just win one, the last call for tenders 10 days ago in Mauritius. Great. Thanks to all of you, and congratulations. Great energy, sustainable, and communicative. Let's switch to English for our next sequence and our next guest. In, is actually our way to be by your side. It allows us to look forward to the future and lay the groundwork for a better world. Now, we go back to Africa, but this time in Kenya, more precisely, where a venture capital fund is pushing the boundaries of innovation. We're going to welcome our next guest right after this. Let me properly introduce our guest today, Andreata. Welcome. So, Andreata, you are a partner at TLCom Capital and lead venture capital investments in early to growth stage tech enabled businesses from origination, investment, management through exit with a happy ending, hopefully. And probably tell us uh, briefly what is TLCom and what are the best examples of companies that you invest in? Thank you. Bonjour à tous. At TLCom, we invest in tech com technology entrepreneurs that are solving large underserved uh, markets on the continent. Technology is important because of four main things. So the first thing is technology allows for increased access to services. So now my grandmother has a mobile phone. She lives in the rural areas and I can contact her. I can send her money on the phone, which is something I couldn't do before. Technology also allows for efficiency where manual systems are now being digitized so you can now have more efficient processes. Uh, on the, the, the third thing that technology facilitates is um, reducing cost to serve customers as well as, uh, as to, to, to serve businesses. And then the final thing that fa technology facilitates is the fact that it's surfacing data, which means that you can make decisions with more information, with more insights. So that's the power of technology. The best way I can describe our investment strategy is by giving two examples of the companies that, we, that are in our portfolio. Twiga Foods. So the average African household spends 50 to 60% of their income on food. This is compared to 10% here in France. And the reason why this is, it's not just because income levels are low, but it's because the cost of food is high. So if you think about, so an analysis that the founders of Twiga did was they found that a, twig, uh, a banana that came from Meru to Nairobi, which is 200 kilometers, costs more than a banana that came from Ecuador to Houston, Texas, so from South America. What, what is driving the high uh, cost of, of food in, in Africa? 
Well, on the supply side, what you find is there are four intermediaries between the farmer and the dinner table, which increases costs. And then also there's 30 to 40% post-harvest loss that's resulting for the, from just loss around when you're transporting. So if you can see in the, in the slide up here, this is somebody transporting food. So you can imagine the level of waste that takes place at that stage. And then on the supply side, the majority of African retail is informal. 85% of retail is informal. The likes of Carrefour and grocery store, that's 15%. And this is so because income, people that have low income levels, they need to be able to shop daily or go every other day. Uh, they don't have the luxury of going to Carrefour, buy a lot for the week, put it in your car, put it in the fridge. That's a luxury they do not, uh, they do not have. So Twiga, Twiga Foods, uh, one of our portfolio company, is using technology to consolidate the supply of food from the farmers and the manufacturer to reduce the post-harvest loss during storage and uh, logistics. And then finally, they are perfecting last mile distribution to the vendor. So in the slide here, we have a, a, a Duca, which is a, a small shop where most people do their shopping. In my conversation with the vendors, they tell me that before Twiga, they would have to wake up at 4 a.m., go to the market, buy their produce, organize for it to be brought back to their store. Now with Twiga in the comfort of their store, they can make an order for their, for their groceries and, and have it delivered, delivered to their shop so their business can continue. Twiga has also unlocked financing for them. So now the vendor has a record of how they have ordered. They can then pass it on to lending companies who can use it to credit score so they can get access to inventory fi financing. Twigger is but one of our, of our portfolio companies. To the vendors, Twigger is bringing convenience, lower prices and financing. To the farmer, Twigger is, um, is a reliable buyer of their produce uh, at a fair price. To the consumer, Twiga is ensuring food security in Africa's urban cities because African cities are urbanizing faster than anywhere in the world. Uh, and they're also tra providing for tracking of food. We invested in uh, Twiga Foods four years ago. Revenues have grown a thousand percent and they're working with a hundred thousand farmers, a uh, hundred thousand vendors um, across, uh, across uh, Kenyan cities. A unicorn in the making, uh, in, in our opinion. Ilara Health. So my husband and I, we have an email chain that where we record the treatment that our daughters get when um, each time we go to, to a doctor. Why is this? It's because there's no central electronic record system of, patient, of, of the data of the treatment that you've received, which of course impacts the quality of care you're able to receive. The vast majority of Africans pay for healthcare out of pocket. So they only go to the clinics when, they absolutely, when it's absolutely necessary. Um, we, we find that, so Ilara Health is one of the portfolio companies that we've, uh, we've invested in. And what they do is they're using technology to standardize the quality of care uh, in African clinics, in the urban, er, peri-urban areas and in, um, in, the urban, in the urban areas. Ilara's point of contact with the clinic is first through its diagnostic devices. So they lease the device to the clinic. Now the clinic has an ability to provide better care because treatment is being provided with diagnostic data, which is not available in many clinics. And then also the clinic now has a revenue stream in terms of they're able to offer tests to their patients and other clinics can also refer to their clinic so they can actually grow grow their patient, their, 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 their businesses. Once inside the clinic, uh, Ilara then seeks to digitize the clinic. So they introduce their electronic medical record. They also, uh, their billing system, which again surfaces more data and the clinic now operating as a business can also access more financing and, and grow. We invested in Twiga Foods last year. Uh, to date, they're working with 700 clinics across, uh, across Kenya and the ambition for them is to take a subset of those 700 clinics, grow and scale them to franchise across, uh, across Africa and provide better care to African citizens. From the, the example of Twiga and Dilara, who are only two of our portfolio companies, you can see that the benefit of what we do uh, 
is not that just for us as, as fund managers from a return perspective, but also for our communities. Our portfolio companies have uh, employed over 2,200 uh, people, of which 30% are women, and the majority of them are young people. We have uh, another a few other companies in our portfolio. We have, we have uh, ULesson, which is an education platform that's educated over 21,000 students in the last year. We have Pula, which is an agri-tech company that has, secure, that has uh, uh, insured five, five million farmers um, over the last couple of years. So together, our entrepreneurs, ourselves as fund managers, and our investors like Propaco are working together to build the Africa that we dream of, which is an Africa that gives dignity and, op uh, and opportunity to its citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Andreata. Very inspiring. So let's welcome Eric Zontop, who is the Senior Investment Officer at Proparco. Wow. So welcome, Eric. Good afternoon, this is, Asha. This is fantastic. Yeah, Here we go. And, uh, you know, uh, I, was, I was looking at the projects and I said, I'm very impressed. So what about you? Are you impressed? You don't have the right to say no, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yes. Uh, I really believe in this project. And it's not because we are indirect investor to TLCOM, but uh, mainly um, because first, this company is tackling a uh, really critical problem in this region. Uh, and this problem concerns the greater majority of the population. So, and second, this company are led by exceptional entrepreneurs. So for these two reasons, I believe that they will have a, a greater future. Right, Andreata, maybe for our audience, uh, what is your definition of a good investment? So when we're making an investment, uh, we try to answer three bucket of questions. So the first one is around the market. So is this an attractive market? So we're looking for entrepreneurs that are s solving problems in large, growing uh, markets, you know, with good unit economics uh, and an ability to, we're, they're using technology to be able to scale. Then the second bucket of questions is what we look at the company in terms of the strength of the company. So yes, it's a great mar market, but is this a business model that can capture the, the market? And then is this a, a team that has the ability to execute on the, on the business model? And then the third bucket of questions we, we ask is around the investment. Is this a good investment? So this is from a valuation standpoint, from the terms uh, that we get. So if a company is able to check those three boxes, then we would invest. Fantastic. And what about the Propaco perspective? What's a good investment for you? Propaco um, is a development financial institution. And um, as such, uh, I would say that our investments are not only necessarily driven or uh, defined by return on uh, investment, but, uh, and this bear great importance, uh, the impact that the investment will make on people's daily lives. Uh, in the case of uh, Ilara and Twiga, um, through TIACOM funds, we believe that these companies are addressing uh, this, uh, this change in life of the population and therefore combined with uh, great return and therefore it, we think it's a good investment. So Andrea, I understand that you work closely with the portfolio companies. So how has TIACOM supported Twiga in Ilara and as well as other companies in your portfolio? Sure. So um, we work fairly closely with our, with our portfolio companies to support them. Um, and so uh, at outside of capital, the entrepreneurs need also business building support. And our team has experience in uh, st strategy consulting, in government, in finance, as entrepreneurs. And we bring all of that experience to the service of the entrepreneurs. So leveraging our global networks, our local net networks, uh, to be able to support them. Um, when they think about strategy, when they think about expansion, hiring, how do you create value? Most of the entrepreneurs are first-time founders, uh, so they've never seen you know, a company scale and exit, and that's a process that, as TLCOM, we've ex we have gone through, so we bring all that experience uh, to, to support the entrepreneurs. Now, I'm curious, how do you work together? What, how, how does the relationship work? Tell us. 
we have a great relationship. It's true that um, Tielcom was one of the first fund manager that we back in the VC ecosystem. And um, we are really happy to, to work with you, Andreata, in this ecosystem. Fantastic, Andreata. So interestingly, you know, when we, we started this journey uh, in the Raising an Africa Tech VC Fund back in 2013, 2014, um, at that time, everybody thought we had grown a head in the middle of our head, uh, of our heads, um, when we were when we we're trying to to raise this fund. And Propago was one of the first investors that came into our fund and really supported us, which is something we appreciate. Propago has also gone on even further to invest in some of our portfolio companies as well, because there's still a lack, lack of capital, not just at the fund level, but also at the portfolio company level. And Propago has really stepped up uh, to support the ecosystem. So we enjoy a great working relationship. Fantastic. Thank you, Thank you Andrea Ta. Thank you, Eric. Thank you very much. You Thank you, Ashok. <laughs> Thank you. Well. We will now turn to Lebanon. No sooner had the noise of war died down than the din of the markets returned. Then suddenly, two massive explosions, followed by a silence soon made heavy by a creeping COVID pandemic. Lockdowns followed, along with the anguish of losing the loved ones. People needed help. They needed to be comforted. And this is what we're going to talk about, ladies and gentlemen. This is the mission of NGO Embrace with Leah Zinun, who is going to tell us more about it. But first, let's watch this. <laughs> Imagine if these calls weren't answered, these cries for help weren't heard. They used to be. Especially in Lebanon, they used to be unanswered before Embrace existed. I am Leah Zainoun, the Director of Strategic Partnerships at Embrace, a leading organization in Lebanon working on mental health and suicide, awareness, prevention, research, and treatment. Embrace works on offering high quality mental health services for everyone. You may already know that mental health has long been stigmatized, which restricts access to intervention and research. But did you know that suicide rates had never been explored until 2008? Embrace in collaboration with the internal security forces studied the trends of deaths by suicide, revealing a 50% increase over 11 years. And I will stop at 2020, being a significant year globally, but more so nationally. One out of four adults in Lebanon will experience a mental health symptom in their lifetime. That happens to be among the highest rates globally. The humans behind Embrace, through this and further research, felt the urgent need to invest in the access to mental health services in Lebanon. In 2017, Embrace launched the Lifeline 1564, the first national emotional support and suicide prevention helpline, in collaboration 
with the National Mental Health Program under the Ministry of Public Health. At 14 hours a day, the Lifeline helped 300 callers a month back then. Today, with a passionate family and donor support such as AFD, the Lifeline is at 21 hours, one of the most available suicide hotlines in the region. We have helped over 15,000 callers with zero lives lost to date. And since 2020, we've been plummeting. Not as in Greece, but as a nation. A revolution. A global pandemic. Devaluation of the Lebanese pound. Excruciating socioeconomic status. Inhumane living conditions. And above all, the Beirut port explosion. While Embrace battled every single one of these mental health stressors alongside individuals in Lebanon, we continued to expand our services to further meet community needs. The Lifeline continues to grow with the launch of a national mental health emergency response mechanism, which allows for field dispatches. Moreover, in just one month and right after the Beirut explosion, we launched a high quality community mental health center, offering mental health consultations, financial medical support, and a multidisciplinary graduate psychology training program with 4,000 consultations, 1,000 medication beneficiaries, and nine graduate psychologists in one year and to date. This is all part of the drive of the Embrace family and we are honored to be recognized and supported for our mission. Our journey is still long, as so many wounds remain unheard, unhealed, and untreated. بس مع الوقت بخف أكثر بكثير مدى دكتور وهذا حيتلم بيني هيك قدرنا نعمل لها شيء تعتوحها بالوقت حاضر بس تعمل لها شيء بكي شيء ماما Embrace Lea Zinun. And Tuma Gonet and Laurent Marion have joined us. So Tuma Gonet is a public health project team leader at AFD and Laurent Marion is the head of the Stabilization and Resilience Unit at Expertise France. Welcome to both of you. So we've just heard Leah and we've watched the situation uh, in Lebanon. So what, what can you say about how is health and medical situation right now in Lebanon? Well, all over the, the last three years, uh, the health, the economic and social situation in, uh, in Lebanon has been worsening. Um, the uh, epidemic of COVID-19, the explosion of Beirut last year, and on top of that, the, uh, the presence and the consequences of the presence of one million refugees from Syria make the situation very, very difficult. Um, today, more than half of the Lebanese are living below the poverty line. The unemployment rate uh, has reached 30 to 40 percent. Uh, the, um, the country cannot provide more than two to three hours electricity per day. Uh, people are facing shortages of uh, medicines, uh, most basic facilities, most basic commodities. Um, private uh, healthcare is no more accessible to the most uh, majority of Lebanese, and the public health system is uh, literally overwhelmed. And 
for women and girls especially, the, the situation is, is very terrible. Mm. Leah, you confirm, right? <laughs> yes, Leah, the Lifeline is one of Embrace's main initiatives. So can you probably tell us what else are you involved in? So Embrace works on awareness research, the Lifeline prevention, but also treatment. So our awareness goes to schools, to uh, universities, to public spaces, and more recently to workplaces to really intervene because as uh, we were mentioning, mental health in, is involved in all of our economic lives, in all of our uh, situations and environments. And uh, from, from the awareness that we do, we continue to try to fill the gaps through our services such as Lifeline and such as the Community Mental Health Center. Right, and, and Duma, what role is uh, the AFD playing you know, in Lebanon today? Well, for, for the AFD group, uh, indeed, the, the health uh, sector is very important. More than uh, 53 million euros have been counted over the last uh, three years. Um, the, um, we, we are supporting today uh, more than 26 uh, uh, primary health care centers, two hospitals, including uh, COVID-19 and uh, neonatal services, uh, psychological services, and um, actions that uh, worked against uh, violence, uh, discrimination, uh, and, uh, and uh, all these programs are, are being implemented uh, with uh, French and international uh, health agencies and NGOs, but I'd say that most of it is uh, being implemented uh, thanks to the uh, tremendous mobilization of the Lebanese uh, civil society organizations. Uh, let, let, let me mention just a few of them uh, who are partners with, uh, with AFD. Um, as Arc-en-Ciel, who is uh, uh, dealing with disabled people, uh, we work with uh, uh, Amel, who is, uh, Amel International, who is working uh, with street children. We work with Schoon, who is uh, fighting against uh, uh, addictions, and Abad, who is uh, promoting uh, gender equity. Equality and, and, and of course, Embrace, who is doing a fantastic job with uh, Lifeline. Um, but the, the fact is that today in Lebanon, uh, the country is facing a, a real brain hemorrhage. In fact, m many of the doctors, nurses, and educated people are leaving the country. And um, the, the 20 to 30 percent of the health professionals are missing today in the, in the, in the sector. Um, so, in this context, we really have to pay a tribute to these uh, youth who are really committed to, uh, to take over the situation uh, with a, a lot of generosity. Many of them are doing it on a voluntary basis with a, a genuine sense of uh, solidarity and equity. And uh, really these young men and women are a strength for the country and a, a lot of hope to, to do something. Thank you, Thomas. Laurent Thomas was just paying tribute to the mobilization of civil society organizations and your heart, you know, at the heart of those in Lebanon. Uh, so what, tell us a little bit, how are things? Thank you very much, Asha. No, I, I can only join what uh, Thomas uh, Gonez just said. Um, and yes, indeed, I mean, uh, supporting civil society organization is uh, a key axis of interventions of uh, Expertise France in Lebanon, and it's particularly relevant in the, the current crisis context uh, today. We're doing so uh, through uh, um, our Shabaki intervention that is financed by the Agence Française de Développement and, and Danida, and that aims at supporting the, the role of, uh, uh, strengthening the role of uh, local CSOs in uh, crisis prevention and uh, management. But before I delve into that, uh, I wanted to, to go back to, uh, to what uh, Les Enoun said, because I think, and I agree with, uh, with Thomas, uh, they, what is very, uh, very striking is uh, um, that Leah Zenoun's testimony is, uh, is actually um, uh, uh, emblematic of, uh, of the incredible um, assets uh, that uh, the Lebanese uh, civil society has uh, in Lebanon today. And I think it's a very important thing to, uh, to, to underline. Also to, to see the, the way they can mobilize themselves and, and respond to the needs. And that's, uh, we, we, we need also to, have, uh, to keep in mind the fact that uh, the Lebanese civil society is one of the most uh, vibrant uh, civil mm -hmm. societies in the Middle East. And that uh, through uh, their, their closeness to the ground, through their capacity to, to reach out to the, the most vulnerable populations, they are in the capacity to uh, provide services in places and when public authorities may be overwhelmed, which is unfortunately very much the case of, uh, of Lebanon today. So, Laurent, I understand that help is much needed then, especially right now in context of crisis. No, indeed, and um, 
It's a bit unfortunate huh, because, uh, uh, as you may know, in, uh, in crisis contexts, uh, uh, very often uh, local civil society actors, in particular the smaller ones, uh, but local actors in, in general, uh, have greater difficulties in access, accessing direct funds from the international community. Uh, or very often, at best, and they, they may be the implementing partners of international agencies and NGOs, which in itself uh, can un undermine their agency and can undermine their financial sustainability in the long run. And, uh, and this is very much what was highlighted in the Grand Bargain Agreement of uh, 2016, uh, when the international community committed to provide more support and direct funding to national responders. Thank you very much. Thank you, Laurent. Thank you, Lea. Thank you, Thomas. And keep up the good work. Thank you so much. You can, of course, give a huge round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, um, pushing the boundaries of fraternity to the borders of Lebanon and Syria, as you know, their wish is actually simply you know, having peaceful relations. That's a wish that is very dear to our next guests as well. Their name is already like a boarding pass, Bedouin Burger. We will welcome them in a few minutes. The time for me to give you some news from the social networks. So you will see uh, there are lots of people are very excited and have sent us lots of uh, remarks on the different presentations. Uh, I will give you all those comments right after this. And for the comments, uh, I will go into uh, French. Uh, we have received uh, many reactions uh, on the social networks. I want to share with you some of the uh, reactions which generate uh, a lot of enthusiasm. So um, I will quote Vincent Toulemont uh, uh, regarding Barzo, who says, Utopia is becoming a reality. Bravo. Um, uh, congratulations to uh, Eric for uh, the project uh, uh, for the prisoners. Uh, thank you for the sustainable project um, um, thank you Vincent for this um, for this uh, uh, Rodrigue Reula who says uh, I would like to uh, pay homage to the effort uh, um, uh, of AFD to promote uh, this economic development of African countries and particularly uh, of my country through several projects um, and uh, it components. Uh, I don't have the country. Um, it's somewhere. Uh, Hassan Shahib, who says hello, everyone, and uh, happy anniversary for the 80th birthday of the EFD. Uh, more success uh, in the, um, you know, carrying out of this uh, innovation and development projects. Uh, I am uh, happy uh, to be uh, among the 20th, 21st person to congratulate uh, you. And, uh, uh, you know, I take part in the photography um, contest uh, um, organized by the Algeria. And the, 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 the theme was Algeria and its biodiversity. I have many more testimonies. And I will now give the stage to our artists. Um, so thank you for all your responses. And before we welcome, before we open this parenthesis, uh, I would like uh, to welcome somebody uh, 80 years uh, um, next to the others. Uh, it's, uh, um, you know, the new generations. Uh, uh, and to talk about it, uh, thank you very much. Uh, welcome, Marie Aveillon. Hello, Mary. Wonderful colors. So, Marie, uh, you're in charge of sensitization and communication of internal interest at the AFD. Your mission for this anniversary was to uh, look forward to 2000. Uh, to 2101, uh, so 80 years later, and you come back uh, a bit rejuvenate, reju rejuvenated. So I come back full of hope, uh, thanks uh, to uh, um, you know a trip in the future uh, that we uh, lived with four with kids coming from um, four corners of the planet with uh, 
artists and uh, um, people engaged in uh, uh, change uh, who were uh, put together to create collectively uh, a better world um, for 2101 and imagine how we will live uh, then and they came from Peru, from Colombia, from Brazil, from Nigeria, from uh, Guinea, uh, from uh, Philippines, from um, India, and so on. So uh, a, a, a complete mixture of people uh, who was incredible to follow. So imagine how this world would be. So the world in 2101, uh, well, all the structures that uh, constitute our society right now uh, will be uh, gone. There will be no borders. Uh, the gender uh, will not exist anymore. The educational system will be completely uh, re re revamped, uh, and we must learn all throughout our lives. So schools. Uh, are places where generations are mixed together. There are no private schools. Diplomas are no longer useful to get a diplo to get a job, but it's, it's based on the life experience, uh, uh, which uh, you know, uh, if, um, you know, your friends, uh, sports, and children feed into. The health uh, care system is accessible uh, for everybody, um, and in this uh, company, in this uh, society, which is very inclusive, uh, uh, nature is at the heart of. Everything. So we didn't understand anything. Uh, so, more seriously now. Um, so, uh, the result of these workshops, um, uh, at least uh, I'm very, um, I'm very surprised by that. Uh, is a, uh, um, uh, you know, a, a concert of drawing. So why this original format? Um, so uh, as part of our uh, um, of the awareness mandates of the uh, youth, we are partners uh, of the international um, cartoon uh, uh, festival of Angoulême, and uh, the, the 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 cartoon books are. are um, a practical way to uh, transfer simple messages. Um, so we wanted to ex to do to experience a unique uh, uh, a unique experience with um, music and uh, art. And so we wanted to um, make you experience uh, uh, what these young people have experienced uh, in time. So we called upon an author, Jules, to uh, help us in the uh, narration of his experience. And uh, Clément Sauvage and Yassine Latrache, who is better known uh, um, as yes. Um, so uh, I would like uh, to call uh, bon Jules, Yas, and Clément Sauvage, and the music um, in Syria and Lebanon uh, that we talked about before with Bedouin Burger. Over to you. Oh, 
يا خيط الصبح ينفرق بيني وبينه عينو ملاني له عينو يا خيط الصبح يا مفرق الخلان يا ريت الصبح وخدود وورد وفاح يا ما وشفو بقلبي جراح ويلي وعيونه جوز سلاح يا ما على عدو
super. Voilà, Bédouine Burger à la musique, Yas, Clémence et Jules au pinceau et à la palette. Franchement, c'était formidable. Merci à vous. Merci, on peut... Thank you so much. A round of applause for them once again, one last time. Voilà, on va vous parler maintenant d'un projet quand l'art... Now, when art meets development, I would like to call on Tipen de Mombine. Where are you, Tiffen? Bonjour, Tiffen. Hello, Tiffen. Hello. Tiffen, you're the head of biodiversity projects at AFD. And agron agronomist, by training, how do you judge the efficiency of mobilization by culture on the theme of biodiversity. Thank you, Asha. We have 10 pilot projects this year trying to bring together art and development. The impact on diversity, that means when I see in Mexico a wall fresco made by Mexican according to the tradition of muralists dedicated to biodiversity that you can see on screen. And when they tell me about the strength, the power, of the meeting between these artists, this work, and local inhabitants, and also the people in the state of Jalisco, you defend biodiversity. In Peru, two French artists from the Brocelian de Forest and two Peruvian artists from the Amazon come together and create together based on links to their forests. They, too, are defending biodiversity. When in India, in Indonesia, in Mauritius, I see artists creating from plastic waste. There, too, we defend biodiversity. The definition and implementation of development projects is based primarily on a technical dimension that is indispensable for their efficiency, and I can bear witness to that. Bringing together art, cultures, and artists who are often forerunners in our societies to promote awareness, to be committed, not just through reasoning, but also via the sensitive dimensions that is self-evident. Tipen, you tell us about METIS, a program that came from entrepreneurship. Tell us more. How did you get that idea? Einstein said that an idea, if it is not absurd, a priori, it is hopeless. Initially, that idea reflects an interior pathway. I'm an agronomist by training, an engineer, and an artist and politician. Uh, when I have time, it's all about bringing together beautiful in the world of action. That's often difficult. The amazing talent and the role of artists in the countries that we support. This idea thanks to a team of colleagues and friends who supported me, allowed us to materialize this idea within the framework of an entrepreneur program at AFD. It was real lucky to have in our organization this trampoline. They said, they said, propose an idea, and even if it's absurd, thank you, Einstein, we can help you to implement it. It became a reality, thanks to support from many colleagues at headquarters, and above all, thanks to 10 agencies that set up a pilot project this year. From the field that they know well with the artists, these are the agencies that embarked upon the METIS adventure this year. Thank you, Tiffen. Thank you so much. And now we're in the size of the others today, but will we be there tomorrow? We've heard testimonials from here and elsewhere, and now we talk a bit about politics in the noble sense of the term. What we'll try to share with you, the political uh, moment of this ceremony has now arrived. In just a few minutes, as you may know, we'll be receiving Mr. Prime Minister for an important address. In the meantime, we'll receive other guests who are committed 
for others. First and foremost, Mr. Jean-Louis Mourla, President of the Commission of Foreign Affairs at the National Assembly. Thanks you and please welcome him. Comme vous l'avez dit, en attendant. As you said, in the meantime, while we wait for the Prime Minister, you have only me. But Jean Castex will be coming, don't you worry. I came to bring a very warm and brief message, because above all, I shouldn't take up the Prime Minister's time. A brief testimonial, therefore, about the fundamental support lent by the Parliament and the National Assembly, and I don't know if my counterpart from the Senate, President Combon, is here, but also from the Senate, their support for AFD's actions. This year, we voted in favor of a very important law. The author of this law is here. He is the reporter, Hervé Verdir, MP from the Côte d'Armor. He did a wonderful job, absolutely fabulous. We have simple ideas. First of all, development aid for uh, inclusive development must once again become what it was no longer for about 10 years now. It must become a priority in our hearts, in our minds, and also in terms of the financial resources we place at the service of this cause. We have done so over the past years through a program law that is important. We significantly increase the level of action and the level of commitments by the French state to for development. And we are about to attain this mythical uh, attainment of 0.7% of GDP that we have been chasing after for years. This is the first goal which has been attained. And I think that we have all felt it in all developing countries, France is back for development. Secondly, we wanted to focus. Development aid must focus on those who need it, on the poorest countries, on countries with which we have close relations, long-standing relations, that we try to make as on neo-colonial as possible. That is an effort that the French must make and that they are accomplishing, I believe, gradually. And I believe that in that respect, this is essential. But let's turn towards the real victims. Development aid must focus on important challenges, the fight against ill-treatment of children, the fight for gender equality. That is such a major problem in so many countries. And above all, now the fight against global warming in defense of humankind. It is this desire to target France's initiatives when it comes to development that was a source of inspiration for us and also for the Senate because we took action together. And when two assemblies, politically different, come together for the same law, I think that is good, both for those for whom that initiative is intended and also for the country itself, showing that on top of differences, they can come together for a common goal. The law that we voted in favor of was unanimously adopted at the National Assembly, and it was adopted in agreement with the Senate. And this is why I'm happy to be here today. One of the important uh, components is with the AFD. We wanted to give it the means. We are very much convinced of the interests and usefulness of this autonomous agency acting on its own initiative, on its own responsibility, and it has the means for expertise and to whose actions uh, the parliament will also be present to the presence of parliamentarians on the board. And, and this was the main concern for Mr. Berville to its participation in a con supervisory commission that will be essentially devoted, uh, led by experts so that we can have a clear vision of the actions carried out. AFD is about autonomy, liberty, 
attacking modern goals. And in, on the other hand, we have supervision, administration, that's up to the parliament, bringing together the desire for development that is uh, put forward by the AFD and the wish to control via the parliament. Good luck. This is an alliance that will work. This is something that works. The uh, representing the people and AFD, good future, a brilliant future to both. Thank you, Jean-Louis Bourlange. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now speak about the diaspora. Let us welcome the minister to the prime minister in charge of gender equality and diversity and equal opportunities. Please welcome Madame Elizabeth Moreno. Thank you so much. What energy. How can I take on after that? Madame Director General of the International Monetary Fund, Mr. Minister, ladies and gentlemen, representatives of the Diplomatic Corps, Mr. President of the Commission of Foreign Affairs at the National Assembly, ladies and gentlemen, parliamentarians, ladies and gentlemen, elected representatives, Director General of the AFD, dear Remy Rio, dear Esther Duflo, dear Rachid Mbembe, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Yes. I had to greet everyone. I'm delighted to be here, of course, and I am relieved to see that we are so many because we're talking about blowing 80 candles. As you said before, the AFD was founded on the 2nd of December 1941, whereas occupation was occupying a part of France, General de Gaulle from London created what became the foremost development institution in the world. By his side was one and uh, one of the first people to join him in London, a companion of Jean Monnet, who worked hard to set it up, working in the shadows, a bit uh, austere, knowledge about international experience, thanks to his experience, acquired the Society of Nations, a man who implemented the Gaudian destiny of common prosperity. I'm referring to Pierre Denis. The first headquarters of AFD was therefore in London. And then it went to Algiers before coming to Paris. The places where it intervened is first and foremost Africa from the beginning. One year after it was set up, a first office was opened in 1942 in Dakar celebrating today 80 years of partnerships and very strong relations between AFD and the African continent, 80 years of fight against poverty, 80 years of development of, for the public sector, 80 years of support for regional integration, 80 years of concrete initiatives in agriculture, energy, digital, promoting women entrepreneurship and the youth, and so on and so forth, 80 years serving populations. The French Development Agency is at the heart of new relations between France and the African continent. The President of the Republic announced its ambitions on the 20th of November 2017 in Ouagadougou. AFD is a key driver in it. As a matter of fact, it, it is in the forefront. As of 2019, uh, public development aid for the funding increased by 1 billion euros. Since 2017, AFD has invested over 5 billion euros per year on the African continent. As a result, it is present in 44 African countries, and the continent devotes 50% of its activities, uh, accounts for 50% 50 50 of its funding. The change wanted by the President of the Republic was then materialized very concretely. One of the key focuses of AFD today is to reinforce what is called non-sovereign partnerships with other partners than states, meaning the private sectors, local authorities, civil societies, and its twins, the public development banks. This is the spirit of the report by Herbe de Verville, a deputy, with us tonight and the law on inclusive 
uh, development in the fight against global inequality that, that the president referred to earlier. Development aid can no longer be carried out without the involvement and of civil societies and entrepreneurs and the young. Another materialization of the Wagadugu commitments, which have resounded all the way up to the summit meeting in Montpellier date of September last, AFD also works for women entrepreneurship and for schooling young girls. I'm for the Minister of Gender Equality that I am, this is an absolute priority. I know AFD's commitment for gender equality, and I thank you, dear Remy. When it comes to more funding allocated to reduce gender equality or the support fund created to finance uh, feminist associations in the South, AFD is a resolutely feminist agency. In 2020, two-thirds of your projects had a significant or key goal to reduce gender equality. AFD is therefore fully within the framework of our feminist diplomacy led by Jean-Yves Durlion. We are the Generation Equality Forum organized by France in June this year, and AFD was a key partner for this event. Ladies and gentlemen, despite some pessimists, African France have a common identity, and this is why their destinies cannot be separated. This is why another ambition was clearly uh, announced by the President of the Republic in Ouagadougou and Montpellier, the key role played by the diaspora. According to the OECD, the African diaspora in our country accounts for approximately 10 percent of the population, meaning 8 million people in France. This is a key on both sides of the Mediterranean because the diaspora are at the heart of are opening up to the world. They play a role as a guidance, ambassadors, a line between our two banks, between our languages and generations, weaving us together with a very precious thread, a thread that belongs to us, all of us, and that must, we must consolidate. AFD has been working on that uh, since 2007 was reinforcing relations between states, diasporas, allow us to lay down the foundation of a new narrative between France and the African continent, a narrative founding on listening and dialogue through win-win partnerships, a new relationship based on trust, a strong partnership, and mutual enrichment. It is within this context that, for the first time, a head of state decided to bring together over 3,000 Africans from civil society in Montpellier on the 8th of October last to speak without filters, without taboos, and without any concessions. That summit meeting was preceded by a great dialogue that you carried out as shield in Bembe in 12 African countries, countries in 2021. In Montpellier, we are both there, there Remy, and there we spoke, of course, about development. We heard the alarms, screams, dreams, and ambitions of the young people who were present. Like you, I also heard the desire to see AFD change its name. Maybe after 80 years down the road, it's the right time, and I think we should do so. It is within the framework of that path from Ouagadougou to Montpellier that we will soon create a house of African worlds and the diaspora in Paris, and we'll organize the first a summit meeting of the diaspora. Yes, diaspora is an opportunity for our common future. And we absolutely need these civil societies to be awake and acting in France and on the African continent. Ladies and gentlemen, an old establishment is the is a wonderful institution that is resolutely turned towards the future. An institution whose noble mission was never altered by the passage of time, quite the opposite, an institution that constantly renewed itself and that never stopped innovating. An institution, and I'm deeply convinced of this, is something that we should all and are all proud about in this wonderful amphitheater. An institution which I hope is one of the greatest anniversaries this year. And I'd like to thank Rémi Guillou, as well as all your teams for your commitment at every moment at the service of development everywhere at all times, today and tomorrow. I thank you.
Merci, Madame la Ministre. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Minister. Let's uh, welcome the uh, Director General of the AFP, Rémi Rillet. Mr. President, Ms. Mrs. Minister, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I have planned on, on giving you a long speech, but I will refrain from it uh, to give uh, uh, the floor to the Prime Minister who is going to meet us in a few minutes. Um, but uh, I really wanted to uh, express myself uh, before we close this meeting. Um, with the speech of the Prime Minister to thank you wholeheartedly, to thank you for taking part in this event. Thank you uh, for following at a distance this event. Uh, and thanks to all uh, who work on, on every day. Uh, it was said by Sarah, Audrey, uh, Benjamin, Lucie, uh, Adama, all our colleagues um, who in the field, uh, uh, you know, concretely uh, help along with these actions uh, and uh, have an impact on all the countries in the world. We reminded us uh, where we come from, this curiosity, this history, uh, African history, uh, uh, we exchange on this uh, uh, very uh, dramatic moment. It's quite singular, and I'd like to thank you, Esther Duflo, for reminding us uh, of the strength and the urgency and the necessity, the absolute necessity uh, to bring uh, answers uh, on the macro scales uh, of financing, of the micro scale as well for projects and concrete actions. And I believe that uh, today, uh, through these exchanges, we managed to open um, uh, 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 a space uh, uh, behind this uh, law of uh, planning of the 4th of August, um, uh, for which uh, for which we could all uh, commit uh, uh, with more prospects, with more mobilization, with more uh, inspiration. We can invent words, concepts, uh, instruments uh, uh, to act uh, at scale on, at the necessary uh, speed uh, uh, for uh, the, um, the 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 climate uh, and for. Uh, the, the common financing of um, uh, with the multilateral banks, uh, we have FDIC uh, fund uh, and all the partners. Uh, I think it's uh, uh, you know this uh, hope for renewal is taking shape. Something new and useful is being born in the French policy and the European policy for development, and we can all rejoice uh, uh, you know of that. Uh, and I can tell you that I have uh, sense uh, in uh, today's discussion the three uh, things that we need to look more in-depth in the years to come, in the month to come. So first of all, uh, um, uh, take these four words uh, on the side of the others very seriously. Uh, Ambassador told me that EFD um, uh, is uh, useful because uh, it uh, plays in the away game, and uh, we can make this our raison d'être to uh, take an interest uh, in uh, in others. Uh, and um, I, you know, uh, you know, I'd like to uh, take uh, the message of the SDGs: uh, its potential for innovation, its potential for standardization, for mobilization, uh, for ramping up. Uh, uh, this is very seriously. I think it's a very important access. Um, and uh, we can, uh, you know, bring about all the uh, sensitive, uh, uh, you know, sensitiveness that is necessary. And we must consider human rights, uh, the um, the uh, inclus inclusion uh, from the bottom up uh, through the development actions. And uh, one last thing, we need to go uh, further in the solidarity investment beyond the public aid to. Um, to a development, uh, whether it's uh, uh, the um, you know um, director of uh, the um, F. The IMF and the OECD, they call also to go beyond uh, uh, what we've done and to uh, free up this uh, financial help that is uh, absolutely necessary today. Let me close by saying that uh, we wanted to organize this uh, uh, event in the natural, uh, in, in the Museum of Natural History because we meet together in the heart of Paris. We wanted to have uh, a place for the solution for, de for uh, sustainable development with uh, uh, to, to contribute 
contribute to this agenda, which uh, will go through the Olympic Games and the Paralympic Games of 2024, and it will give its whole strength to the political orientations uh, that uh, were uh, touched upon today. And I will close the session before we hear from uh, the Prime Minister. Uh, I'd like to thank you once again for your participation. Uh, thank you, Rémi. Very well, Mr. Minister Elizabeth Moreno, uh, the President uh, Jean-Louis Bourlange, uh, ladies and gentlemen, members of Parliament, uh, the Mayor of the 13th uh, uh, Arrondissement, uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, President, uh, Mrs. Laurent Sorbiana, uh, Rémi Rioux, ladies and gentlemen. I am very happy and honored to, to be here physically with you tonight uh, in this uh, exceptional circumstances, um, in this uh, place uh, which is uh, just as exceptional. Some 80 years ago, as you know, France uh, was no longer France, but it was everywhere where France, uh, free France, was fighting for its uh, for reconquering its uh, soil and its independence. Um, everywhere where General de Gaulle has understood that the link of our country with the rest of the world uh, would be an indispensable aid to the freedom of France. This is the reason why he created in 1941 the Caisse Centrale of uh, Free France that would make it possible for fighting France to hold on to uh, financial autonomy and the capacity for management. Um, uh, when France was freed, men like Pierre Mendes France was aware of the fact that the victory was uh, to be uh, for the economies of overseas. Uh, as soon as 1950s, this tool was used to help uh, the processes of independence, uh, particularly in Africa, and then the development of this uh, young economies, um, and finally, uh, their, um, the, the, when they were ushered into globalization. So the strength of this institution was uh, uh, to be able to adapt to the evolution of the world. Uh, and uh, it it, uh, went, uh, it, it came across the, uh, the ages without losing sight of its, uh, of its uh, reason for existing. For more than 80 years, you've helped uh, France uh, to uh, keep alive uh, way beyond the French uh, territory and even its zone of influence, uh, the prince universal principles uh, that um, uh, are our very identity today. We uh, no longer talk about assistance, but we talk about cooperation. Operation. We no longer Nous act for others, uh, we act together. Uh, Face with the global challenges, uh, be it uh, the climate change, uh, equality between uh, women and men, uh, the fight uh, against poverty and inequalities on the world level, uh, the AFD uh, always preferred uh, the sharing of common values uh, uh, to uh, the uh, dictation of a unilateral vision from Moti to Minaka, from Tilabi to DIFA, it's this alliance uh, that you keep alive on a daily basis um, in um, circumstances that are more and more difficult, uh, fortunately. In a world uh, where uh, the uh, imperial temptation is so strong that it threatens everywhere multilateralism, your action, the action of the FD, is uh, decisive. Uh, this model of aid to development, which thanks to you uh, is, uh, is, is, is honoring our country, is, uh, uh, we must say, um, in competition with others. Uh, I'm thinking of the ramping up, uh, more particularly in, Afri in Africa, of um, lenders which have much less scruples uh, in their practice uh, of uh, credit, uh, in, te in terms of indebtedness, and are uh, less worried about the independence of uh, partner countries. Uh, uh, these uh, 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 lenders uh, um, you know, follow a logic of uh, for short-time profitability, which uh, runs contrary to the interests of the countries which uh, they pretend to help. Uh, in the face of this competition, we had to rethink our strategy and uh, 
uh, re-equip our um, uh, approach. Uh, this is why, as soon as 2017, the President of the Republic uh, impulsed a, a complete re revitalization of our development policy in its philosophy, in its methods, uh, as well as its, its means. Um, uh, the political project, uh, which uh, was translated uh, in the uh, uh, planning law of August uh, 2001 and for the fight of uh, global inequalities, um, uh, which uh, was defended by the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Uh, and uh, I would like to uh, salute uh, his, his and um, his uh, effort. And I'd like to pay homage to Jean-Louis Bourlange, who is the president of the uh, Foreign uh, Affairs Commission, as Hervé Bervin, who was the rapporteur for this law. This law made the development a pillar, um, you know, a full pillar of our foreign policy, a policy uh, which is at the service of the um, development uh, uh, as seen by France, which defends our values and our interests, of course, uh, but with the ambition of uh, building uh, true partnerships uh, and uh, for the long time on an equal, equal footing. For France um, and uh, for the AFD group, uh, solidarity is not optional uh, from an economical point of view, but a political and moral obligation. In reality, it's the only uh, policy which is realistic um, in a strong sense uh, of the word, if only because our world is more and more interdependent. Um, and uh, uh, the last illustration uh, is the pandemic, uh, COVID-19 which uh, uh, we cannot hope to eradicate uh, for the long run if the poor countries uh, um, you know, are in infected uh, because they are not uh, sufficiently vaccinated and treated. Um, um, immigration, which is the result of this economic, social, and political tension, are, of course, uh, uh, also global. They constitute uh, a challenge that must be dealt with. Uh, uh, France has chosen, uh, by relying notably on the AFD, to act upon the, uh, the uh, sustainable causes of this immigration. It helps the more vulnerable countries uh, in their um, development models uh, for their population to live uh, uh, comfortably uh, where they are. And this is the reason why, for five years now, uh, education, equality between women and men, the, 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 the the fight for human rights have always guided uh, the action of the AFD. Uh, since 2017, uh, you had a, a clear objective uh, to, um, you know, uh, to, to, to concentrate on this objective by giving you the means to succeed uh, in a, a world where uh, the help for development uh, is a strategic uh, uh, purpose. Nothing would have been worse than to defend principles without having the means to do so. And from that point of view, ladies and gentlemen, figures are clear, uh, indisputable, and recognized by all. The French uh, uh, help has uh, increased by 35 uh, percent uh, during the last five years to reach now its uh, highest level uh, at 12.5 billion euros. It represents or will represent uh, in 2022 uh, 0 0.055 of the global develop of the um, GDP without 0 0.4 in 2007. It was 0 0.33 percent uh, some 20 years ago. This amount will continue to uh, increase um, because uh, we have uh, uh, put in law the objective uh, to reach by 2025 0.7% uh, of our national wealth uh, invested in development. Uh, the uh, challenge, uh, which is to maintain uh, uh, an upward path, was, uh, uh, was met. Uh, and I, I, I increase, uh, I, I insist, uh, even though even during the crisis or as other countries uh, chose to reduce their efforts. Uh, thus, uh, France uh, is now um, clearly and re resolutely above its partners in the uh, OECD, which uh, dedicates uh, on average 0.33 percent of its uh, um, national wealth uh, to international solidarity. Uh, more than 4 billion euros uh, have irrigated uh, our action in favor 
sector of uh, development uh, in the course of the last five years, um, making France the fifth uh, uh, world uh, lender and therefore an indisputable actor. These means, uh, which have been increased, uh, uh, call upon a new uh, discourse of the method. Thus, the planning law of the 4th of August uh, uh, of 2021 uh, put inclusivity and partnership uh, at the center of our approach. This law, and it uh, warrants to be uh, underlined, is the only text that was, was voted unanimously by the Senate and the, Gen and the, um, and the um, uh, National Assembly. Uh, it's, uh, you know, in the, it's, it's in the honor of the members of parliament to uh, have reached a consensus when, it, uh, is, when we talk about investment uh, uh, for France. It's together with the parliament, we have have uh, set a new strategic framework uh, to widen uh, the uh, development uh, beyond the agreements between the governments. Uh, uh, the law um, talks about a concerted action, which calls upon the mobilization of all the actors, uh, um, uh, collective, uh, um, you know, uh, and, and, and the rest of the actors. Uh, in, in our embassy, together with the uh, agency, we will have uh, uh, the duty to lead a strategic action by avoiding redundancies and inconsistencies. Uh, this trust, uh, which we put in the field, we were able to uh, implement it with the agencies uh, uh, overseas. Uh, for the last five years, your action uh, has uh, undergone a new impulse with the creation, creation of the department, uh, including the three territories, uh, uh, including uh, the uh, French overseas territories and the neighboring countries. This is why over the last five years, um, uh, the action of the AFD uh, overseas uh, was uh, marked by its strong capacity uh, to answer the exceptional circumstances uh, that uh, face these territories. Um, uh, support the um, Saint-Martin after uh, the uh, Irma cyclone, uh, the deployment of uh, common initiatives in New Caledonia and in French Polynesia uh, to uh, face the uh, COVID crisis. Today uh, was the Caribbean uh, experience uh, trouble times. Uh, uh, I want to uh, pay homage to the patient work uh, that uh, you have undergone uh, through the Cohon uh, 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 agreement, which have been signed with the collectivity and uh, through which you provide uh, uh, you know, aid in engineering. This this aid helps the communities to restructure their services, to find a budget uh, balance, and to uh, avail themselves once again of the capacity to invest in the services to their citizens. Um, France uh, uh, was also on the first line so to uh, suspend um, the uh, debt service in the most vulnerable countries, which made it possible for them uh, to uh, find uh, uh, resources uh, uh, to, to face with the crisis. Uh, in November last year, France uh played an important role uh, in the adoption of a um, uh, common framework for the treatment of debt uh, for the poor countries, which was uh, a way to find a, a more sustainable answer to this problem, which was done. And it was done through the uh, common framework of the G20 and the Club of Paris. So this action, we, uh, we continued with it, uh, particularly uh, when we had the summit on the financing of the African economies, uh, which uh, took place uh, mid-May of this year, particularly uh, by uh, uh, um, getting the increase in favor of the African continent, uh, uh, the benefits of the drawing rights up to uh, $650 million. We obtain of the G20 uh, it, it, that it endorses uh, uh, the $100 million uh, of the uh, special drawing rights to the large economies uh, to the benefit of the countries that need it the most, in particular in Africa. And we work uh, uh, to make this objective more concrete in the first in the f in next few months. Um, uh, uh, on addition to this action on finance, France. Uh, as you know, it uh, has uh, strongly uh, was strongly mobilized to, to provide an answer uh, that would not be uh, merely economic, uh, such as uh, uh, the initiative um, uh, taken by the agency uh, called uh, Health uh, in Common illustrates it. And I'd like to remind you uh, 
of uh, uh, the line that was always ours um, uh, when it comes to the vaccines, uh, which is uh, a very essential topic today. In other words, we want to promote uh, an equitable uh, access and universal access and give uh, uh, by mid-2022 120 uh, million doses of vaccine to the poor country, which makes France the third the, the third uh, largest donor after Germany and the USA. Today, more than half of the, uh, of the way has been, uh, uh, we, we've gone half, half the way, and this is why we have uh, encouraged the multilateral bank of developments to sustain uh, the financing of vaccines of the members and to help them uh, plan for national uh, vaccination plan. We, um, we, we advocate uh, for these institutions to reinforce the health uh, systems uh, to prepare for the uh, future pandemics. Um, the fight uh, against uh, the climate change uh, is the other major priorities uh, which the AFD has set for itself. And you allow me, ladies and gentlemen, to thank uh, very uh, wholeheartedly Laurence Toubiana, not only for the role that she uh, played uh, uh, you know, at the head of the executive board since Jan July 2000. 13, as well as Expertise France more recently, but also, as you know, as you all know, for uh, having been the uh, architect of the uh, Paris Accord uh, in 2015, which make it possible for the FD to be at um, the spearhead of these programs. Uh, you also helped with the major transformation of the agency and uh, the government, uh, through me, wants to thank you for uh, the work uh, that you've done. And finally, uh, we uh, wanted to to put efficiency and legibility uh, a marker of our actions. Uh, it is uh, why we have set up a commission of the evaluation of the public aid development, uh, which is made up of um, uh, parliamentarians and recognized experts. It must shed some new light uh, on our action. It will be independent uh, and uh, free to uh, uh, put uh, uh, you know, uh, a finger on what is not efficient. Uh, and it will uh, be uh, there to reinforce the trust of our uh, citizens in the public aid of France uh, to go beyond some uh, uh, preconceived ideas um, and to counter false information. In this, uh, along the same lines, that the state uh, will, will build a database of the AFD, which will be accessible to all, which will make it, which will make it possible to to all citizens who see who does what with what means and where. Um, uh, you know, similarly, I'm, I'm expecting the AFD uh, to pursue the objective of efficacy and sobriety, which was uh, uh, assigned to it, uh, in, both in its relationship with its partners as well as its internal function, particularly as far as the um, durability of its financial model. These measures must go uh, hand in hand with the means that was granted to us. Without this transparency, we will have run the risk of of weakening uh, the democratic, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, adhesion to approach. Uh, this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this renewal of the philosophy and, and the means to development, which the President of the Republic uh, uh, recalled during the summit of Montpellier of the 8th of October, um, also goes through a growing uh, room uh, made for the partnership uh, with all the members of the civil society, which play a major role in the field when it comes to solidarity. Uh, the law of the 4th of August 2021 uh, allows for the doubling of funds uh, that go through uh, civil society and funds that uh, are aimed at the external action of collective um, of, of, of um, territorial um, um, communities. Uh, this summit of the 8th of October was of a new gen of, of a new gender. Without uh, a head of state, without institutions, uh, it was uh, uh, dedicated exclusively to the youth of Africa and France. Um, and for the first time, uh, hundreds uh, of young entrepreneurs, artists, researchers, athletes, students, personalities, uh, uh, which are fully committed of France and Africa, got together uh, 
to think about uh, prospects and concrete actions um, to be taken for the renewal of the relationship between the African continent and France. This uh, uh, spirit of renewal, which uh, the uh, President of the French Republic uh, wanted, uh, is uh, uh, over to you. Uh, is, 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 is as the uh, chairman of the board uh, is to be more concrete with the change of name of the agency. With this new approach, which she defined, uh, uh, which would be more of a partner and which would be more inclusive, the President of the French Republic wanted this new name. Uh, to be found as a result of collective work, uh, thanks to the staff of the agency, but uh, uh, to, to the representative of national and international institutions, uh, as well as the civil society of the world over. On uh, this uh, topic, uh, we uh, will meet in February 2022 at the summit between the African Union and the European Union, which will be a, a great time uh, during uh, our presidency, which will start on the 1st of January, which will make official this uh, new name. Uh, as we uh, have done it for 80 years with the capacity of the adaptation, uh, I know that the agency will succeed uh, uh, in this uh, new mutation at the service of this uh, wonderful ambitions. It's also up to you, dear Philip, uh, that uh, uh, you know that you will uh, you know uh, prevail over uh, the installation of the F AFD in the uh, Australia station and all these projects. Um, uh, you will uh, carry out with Rémi Rioux, the Director General of the FD, and I'd like to pay homage to his commitments and remarkable work. Uh, this is uh, a large-scale project, uh, but beyond uh, the uh, you know real estate uh, uh, preoccupations, uh, I see with you uh, the opportunity to make Paris uh, the capital for the solutions for the international development, uh, sustainable inter uh, development. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, 80 years, um, well, at the end of the day, is quite young. And there remains a, a lot uh, to do. And uh, your institution has shown uh, that it knows uh, how to uh, undertake long term policies. Um, uh, you know, it should be uh, a redundancy. This uh, 80th birthday, um, you wanted it to be uh, on the side of the others. Um, so it's a slogan which uh, in line with the uh, slogan that you embody, uh, that of a France uh, which uh, carries out uh, the value that it in embodies. But it's also, um, you know, it, 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 it's also at, at what's also at stake is to enrich uh, our, uh, you know, look on things to be uh, uh, on an equal footing with those uh, um, that for which we um, we uh, sustain development. Uh, in a few moments, I will exchange with the minister, with the young that are committed, and I'm very happy uh, for it because they will be the ones who will be uh, the main representative, uh, but uh, they will be the main actors um, of the political project that uh, we carry together. And uh, to this youth which is committing, uh, I would uh, like to say when I meet with, with it uh, in a few moments, I would like to say to them that they carry this inheritance of 80 years of the AFD and the future, the future of France uh, and uh, its action of the world around uh, next to the others. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur le Premier ministre. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister, and I think uh, we can applaud uh, people the world around. Thank you for the 4,000 uh, uh, people who are watching uh, on, our, on, our, on their screens. Uh, 